Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Philippians chapter 2, I'll read 3 and 4. Pay attention. It says, Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Verse 4. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. When you find the Noah translations, it's an attempt to say that you pay attention to the needs of others above your need. I, I want to talk, um, well, I will just start here, but I, I'm, I'm really not going to dwell there, on the concept, the root cause of majority of the challenges that believers have. Listen, please. The root cause of jealousy, the root cause of envy, listen carefully, the root cause of lust and addictions, the root cause of sin, the root cause of um, selfishness, the root cause of covetousness. You see, all of these attributes, listen, let me teach you something. You see, spiritual things, we know it by now are more grave and more serious whether good or bad than physical things are we together now did you know that um god forbid but come if it's an example please if i get this lady pregnant what did i say is an example listen are we together now i'm very serious tonight laugh now because i'm sure that you will not need to laugh again as we continue if i get this lady pregnant for instance listen it will look more regrettable because there is something obvious her stomach will protrude are we together but if i lost after this lady now she doesn't get pregnant by me lusting after her so i will think i am free are, are we are we together now if i slap this lady and there are marks of my hands on her face you call it wickedness and you say this guy is wicked because there is a physical expression but if i hold bitterness and jealousy bitter anger and rage sorry my dear against her it's easy for you to think i'm a spiritual man are we together now let me tell you something i have discovered bless you darling you can pick up your it is it is easier it is easier listen in fact in my opinion i know that sin is sin but in my opinion what the bible calls the sin of the spirit have you read that there is the sin of the flesh that can have physical evidences they can have regrettable consequences immediately you are punished for it you receive embarrassment for it and it's over but what the Bible calls the sin of the spirit that may not find any physical expression is more deadly, listen, is more dangerous, 
it has the highest ability to choke your spiritual progress are we together now and for many believers when you begin to walk in the kingdom because you are focusing on other things like the anointing you know faith trying to understand redemption understanding the Pauline epistles understanding a lot of things you know the miraculous visions prophecies the gifts of the spirit because of your focus on these charismatic dimensions of truths or the principles of the kingdom very little attention is paid to these very deep spiritual things in fact usually we interpret them to be basic we just feel i mean that that's that, let's let's talk of great things like power miracles etc etc but as you rise in god you will discover that the text of your dealing with god will no longer be physical things are we together when god begins to deal with you at a mature dimension you will find out that his concentration will be the motivation behind everything he's not as interested um, in the physical expression of it as it is the root cause the motivation behind everything that you do if you're following me say amen. amen and so i found out that the root cause of all of these things not most of them all of them is in one word one simple word it's called self-centeredness we call it self but the word is self-centeredness not selfishness self-centeredness everybody say it self-centeredness this is the root cause of sin any kind this is the root cause of any expression of the flesh in fact it is the doorway to the flesh finding expression when you are studying the spirit man and the man of the flesh it's impossible for you to study the man of the spirit and the man of the flesh without understanding the foundation listen the bible says the axe is laid at the root of the tree so when jesus is dealing with a matter he does he forgets about the expressions and goes to the root of the tree and attempts to hit it right there because when the root is destroyed then all the leaves will dry off naturally are we together now self-centeredness our human nature has been so designed that the motivation listen subconsciously behind every activity we do on earth is to find a way of gratifying our desires be it pleasures be it a sense of ambition whatever it is and that is not wrong in itself except for the fact that in God's economy listen please if at any point you are found pursuing anything that does not have a direct bearing to the advancement of the kingdom and the enthronement of Christ experientially that entire activity is useless are we together now listen I have discovered as I study the Bible and I've read my Bible a number of times every story captured in scripture was only captured because of the appearance of that story with respect to Jesus and his purposes many things happened during different dispensations but certain stories were omitted because they did not have a direct bearing to the advancement of the kingdom are we together so every story that found its way to the bible only found its way because of the alignment of that story to the purposes of the kingdom that means in god's economy please listen the degree to which you are featured at any given dispensation is the degree to which your life and everything about your life can contribute to enthroning Christ are we together now so if the let's say the history of the church in Zaria is to be written from 2014 to 2016 if the Holy Ghost were to inspire men to write you will find out that many important things that happen in Zaria will not be recorded there are we together 
God will only focus on the activities that were centered around his kingdom. When you study, I mean, people who have read archaeology and history and all of that, you will know that concurrently, at the point certain things were being recorded in scripture, certain historical things were happening at that same time. But the Bible did not see the need to include them because they had no contribution in the understanding of Christ and his purposes. Are we together now? So if God is going to write a little story about your life, you will think he will write when you went to the market. You will think he will write when you went to ABU. Anything that cannot relate to his purposes in your life will not be captured. Are you getting what I'm saying now? This, brothers and sisters, is the foundation of our work with God. And this state I just explained to you is the greatest enemy of the flesh. The flesh thrives upon ownership. The flesh thrives upon um, personal ambition. Listen, listen, you have to understand this if you want to be spiritual. So the Bible says in 1 John chapter 2, when you read from verse 16, he says, love not the world. This is John the Apostle now teaching us. He says, love not the world, neither the things, listen, that are in the world. He didn't say don't have them, 15. He says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Right? He says, if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him then he breaks down these things into three categories for all that is in the world 16 the lust of the flesh category one the the challenges that you experience by reason of having a material body the limitations that you are bound to experience because you possess a body number two he says the lust of the eyes then number three, the pride of life. He says, is not of the Father, but is of the world. So, John the Beloved, having been mentored directly by Jesus Christ, and understood the, 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 the very essence of the kingdom life, is teaching us in his epistle. And he's saying, look, if you want to be spiritual people, you must come to a point where this self must be destroyed trying to trying to do physical things to address jealousy address sin address this all those things will only lead to legalism and religion the core motivation behind every one of these things believe me brothers and sisters is self-centeredness self-centeredness the need to see yourself exalted that's why we fight if you don't call me apostle i fight you why because self self wants to be glorified that's why we want titles are we together now seeing then that we are in this world but not of the world there must be a mechanism for us to be able to effectively take advantage of all the tools that have been prepared before us without being contaminated by their effects in our spirit tools such as prosperity tools such as influence are we together now tools such as the anointing all of these are tools but then there must be a foundational build up so that while we engage constantly in this earth using these tools we shield ourselves from the effect that using these things outside of this understanding creates on people so there is something money will do to you if your motivation is wrong are we together now that is dangerous there is something anointing will do to you when your motivation is wrong being prosperous with a self-centered understanding is the recipe for destruction being anointed with a self-centered mentality is a recipe for destruction are we together self let me show you something apostle james was teaching us something and he 
um when i when i when i saw it uh, for me it, it it touched me um was that that's that's not not um not james help me holy spirit second timothy please give us second timothy that should be timothy right second timothy three second timothy three i think i'm right second timothy three please give it to us from verse one to four it says this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come verse two for men shall be what lovers of their are you seeing this now men shall be lovers of their own selves and as a result many other things will follow because they are lovers of their own self they will be covetous they will be boasters they will be proud do you understand the context of that scripture now the foundation is lovers of themselves lovers of themselves is not a point it is the reason why these other things will happen because men shall be lovers of them own, their own selves that love for themselves will make them covetous so when they see somebody else's thing they say ah this person does not deserve it it should be mine it should be me are we together then it says boasters proud blasphemers disobedient to parents unthankful ingratitude god you tried but you can do more unholy uh-huh without natural affection truth breakers false accusers look at them incontinent fierce rageful why are you touching my reputation do you not know i am apostle joshua selman lovers of themselves so that aggression is not a family thing this is what is leading to it why you are angry with everybody despisers of those that are good can you imagine that a man can love himself to a point that he despises good people verse 4 traitors heady high-minded lovers of pleasure more than lovers of now the key word there is more than the key word is not pleasure the key word is not god the key word is more than more than it's like a meter your love for pleasure gets to a point where it moves beyond its jurisdiction and overrides to a point where your love for god is subject to your love for things your love for cars your love for houses your love for all of this self-centeredness the need the craving to be on the scene the need the craving to be the epicenter of everything the need for recognition the need for honor the need to occupy the position of God listen this is what happened to Lucifer I will ascend to the stars I will be like the most high that was the manifesto of Lucifer and while he said that for the first time God would find somebody in heaven who was not aligned to his purposes it was no longer about the program of God it was Lucifer I will be I'm not interested whether I'm sent on errand I want to be like the most high and he was charged with treason and the Bible says there was war in heaven and Lucifer was judged and was casted down this attitude is best described in the story of the prodigal son listen let me tell you how you know you are self-centered the language of self-centeredness is me myself when when you no longer care the consequences of your pleasure on others and on the kingdom regardless of who suffers it let me get what i want is self-centeredness god is helping someone tonight you are not happy because i'm talking about you and me 
self-centeredness believe me is the root of sin self-centeredness is the root of these attributes of the flesh that so destroy us they are the weights the bible says we should lay aside but you don't say i will stop jealousy uh -uh. they are effects the cause for that is a life of self-centeredness brothers and sisters look at me is the reason why some of you here looking at me even if you have to kill to make money you will do it why not because you are not a christian something in you listen let me tell you what self-centeredness does it creates an imaginary pressure and mounts that pressure on you and you keep pushing yourself to do say and be things that are unnecessary because you believe that your sense of worth is tied to those things that's why we do very stupid things self-centeredness is why pastors fight themselves it's why business people fight themselves it's why a husband and a wife cannot live in peace because they are self-centered everybody brings his idea it has to be my way that's another language of self-centeredness my way it must be my way listen the moment you find yourself whether saying or being driven by these motivations i want to glorify myself my pleasure it must be my way then you know that self-centeredness is eating you up there are people here who think it's just a temperament issue they say it's just my personality type that, that is complete nonsense don't let the devil fool you that is that is self-centeredness the core the very control button of evil in your life are we together there are people here you've been trained to have things happen your way if it is not your way to hell with it that motivation has driven us into all sorts of things when when um, we were being taught evangelism in the seminary this is what happened how many of you have heard of something called four spiritual laws one green pamphlet right that's a very good book because from the first page they will show a man's heart in an arrow and then they show a chair inside then they show you sitting there that's exactly that's the clearest description of self-centeredness the god of your own self now let me tell you something the devil is smart he angles self-centeredness so it does not exactly look like you are taking the place of god do you understand it's very subtle so you think i love god i pray when i sin i run to god that's the point you are not running to god because you love him you are running to god because of fear that you think that sin has opened a door for something to happen to you is still you i want to go to heaven is still you it looks spiritual but it's still you are you seeing you are still self-centered that is spiritual and you are mentioning heaven does not mean that it's of god when it is about you are we together so i'm trying to walk in holiness so that um, i mean i won't do this if this lady waves me i don't even want to look at her face because by doing that god will see me it's still self-centeredness it's just a more religious form of it it's still self-centeredness are we together i'm preparing a nice message and i'm praying in tongues fasting three days dry but the reason is so that everybody who comes for koinonia will know that there is a man of god a, a spiritual form of self the moment it is for you for your glory for your reputation let me tell you i can tell you how self-centered we are because of how much we we fight to make things work in our life you see the way you take the issue of your success too personal as if your name is on the line itself it says for i've been crucified with christ nevertheless i live yet not i but christ that lives in me are we together watch this if they come sam 
if this is Sam's handkerchief, now I love Sam with all my heart. If this is Sam's handkerchief and it falls, now I love him and I love the handkerchief, but I do not think I will be so distracted to run and come and pick this handkerchief. Are we together? If the falling of the handkerchief becomes so personal that my reputation is tied to it, is it really Sam's handkerchief? It's mine. I'm trying to claim it. That's what we do with our lives. The level to which we are forcing ourselves to make it and force ourselves to walk, the way we take the issue of our personal success so personal, as if our world will crumble, the way we guard our name with such fragility is a sign that we are self-centered. That level of investment cannot just be for God. We are doing it for ourselves. Thank you. Okay. Let us go. Are we together? Hmm. When people become overconscious of their reputation, it's self-centeredness. It's self-centeredness. When God began to reveal these things to me, I was amazed. And I said, my God, that means who is free? Who truly is free? I looked at my own life and I said, my God, imagine how many times I've been caught up with these things. Well-meaning, sincere, very sincere. You see, the key to walking with God is to tremble at his word and be open. When you stand before God and foolishly excuse yourself, it is still self-centeredness. So when the word of God is coming, many of us just tap ourselves and like, wow, I hope they are hearing. Are you joking? This is a message for everybody. It's a message you should sit down and have a sober reflection upon. Look at your life and see the motivation behind the things you are doing. And you will see the uncomfortable truth that you have to admit tonight that you have been self-centered. Absolutely self-centered. I know you say it is for him but the truth it is is that you only say it as a cliche but in reality it is for you self-centeredness there's so many things that have happened in the body of Christ that look spiritual and looks as if we are doing it for God. When the scribes and the Pharisees caught the woman in adultery, listen, they were scholars, they were dragging her to Jesus. You would think they were so passionate about Moses and keeping the law. They were looking for a way to destroy the ministry of Jesus. So they did not care who was the scapegoat that be used. That was being used let me tell you something about self self-centeredness self-centeredness is an expression of wickedness because in an attempt to get your desire you do not care who suffers and you do not care what goes wrong in the life of anybody is the hallmark of self-centeredness when my desire becomes a passion that whatever suffers in the process whether god or man it's none of my business that's why people kill to get political positions they don't mind they go to a herbalist and he says bring five children and they go and steal the hard end ch children of five families slaughter them while they are slaughtering these children they don't care all they are seeing is the office the apex i tell you that's where it comes from self-centeredness When a man leaves his wife and goes to carry another prostitute and travel, his self-centeredness is not just pleasure, it's self-centeredness. Are we together? When somebody bribes in the office and corners billions of naira into his pocket and returns back rejoicing, calling himself a rich man, it is not just money, it is self-centeredness. Because that's somebody's salary in his pocket, he does not care. That somebody has a wife and children, he does not care. All he's concerned about is, let me get this, is it not how we all are? How many times have we not paid attention to the effect of our pursuit on the advancement of the kingdom 
and the well-being of the people oh let me talk to you and I, I say this please don't take this personal but I want to talk to you and 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 do you know do you know sincerely speaking the worst the, the worst victims of this are ladies sisters say amen that's right because of your emotional nature and your cravings to have your desires met I've seen ladies who don't care what goes wrong provided they get it if you tell a lie to get the withdrawn money no problem let me just wait if I must corner somebody to buy the iPhone 6 iPhone 7 whichever one no problem we are more concerned about the arrival of our desires regardless of what suffered for it to arrive that's the apex of self-centeredness have you not seen visitors who come to your house they come to beg rice and you tell them honestly i just have one mudu and you would think they'll be sympathetic and say oh i know if it's one mudu it's okay they also say hey, but we, i can still have it you see people like that and at a point you just say okay no problem let me just give you and you give them and they collect they say thank you and they are going <sighs> we are like that we are laughing but that's how we are so says the word of God we are spiritual but he's helping us to rise that's what will make someone come and see someone's food the last meal and just eat it and pour water in the plate and keep it you were hungry but you never believe that someone else may have a desire and as far as your do you know let me tell you something brothers and sisters i have worked among people leadership has opened me up to people there are people whose hearts are bad not because they are bad people themselves the 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 the, the appetite to getting their lost satisfied is very terrible anything that will make it happen let it happen if God will suffer to hell with him. Are we together? Yeah. So when a pastor sits down and tells people, all of you bring five, five hundred thousand and does not care that this person is a student and it's not even earning up to five thousand and says, look, you better use your faith. Bring your 500,000. It looks spiritual. And people claim it's for God. It's not for God. When it is for God, you follow God's way. God has a system. Are we together? Yeah. Someone was talking to me, um, I think some weeks ago, and he was just talking about churches and all of that. And then he told me a few things. He was just mentioning different churches. And I looked at him. I said, I want to ask you a question. I said, why are you talking about these things? And he said, no, 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 no. It's not like I have any problem. I say, you do. Are you kidding me? You do. Because the God you claim to be serving, who you are defending so personally is quiet. So I wonder why you, who is supposed to be his representative, is so personal about the issue. Yes, I know the lady wore trousers, but why have you taken it so personal? It's like a mission you gave yourself. Are you really sure you are doing that for God? Okay, the lady covered her hair and does not wear trousers. What is your own business? We do a lot of things that look spiritual. But brothers and sisters, the foundation of it is self. Self. The need for self. So we fight jealousy. Ladies, brothers, jealousy. Whenever you see someone with something nice, something in you reacts. Jealousy, self-centeredness. It would have been me. Why should this lady be having this? When did she, I mean, can you imagine? This guy wanting to marry her? Ah, come on, something is wrong. There is a story we must tell the brother. Self-centeredness. How about preachers? We love crowds like this. We claim it's for the glory of God. But underlying it is our desires. That's why pastors put pressure on members. They come up with every kind of business schemes to force ministry to work. When you see the way they are putting pressure, 
this cannot be of God. It's too personal. Why don't you let God take charge of his own kingdom? Kononia is quiet this night. Myself. For me. So we go to pray. Lord, I trust you for a car. And let me tell you something. <laughs> My God. You can spiritualize. Do you know, I love the word because Jesus is the word. And the Bible says the word can discern the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Father, give me a car for your glory. And then he says, since it's for my glory, walk with my own timing. And he said, no, Lord, give me a car now for your glory. And God is saying, no, it's for my glory. Let me control the timing. I say, Lord, you, I force you by sowing a seed. Give me a car now. It's for your glory. And God said, just remove the for your glory. And say, give me a car now. Before I know what to do with you. <laughs> we think, we think because we are saying for your glory. It is spiritual. Listen, let me tell you something. Brothers and sisters, the unrestfulness in our approach to life is a sign that we don't want to fail because our ego is so tied to the failure. Are you getting that? Five o'clock, people wake up in every city. While they are praying, Jesus, I thank you. This is a beautiful day. What they are saying in the spirit is, scapegoat, how are you? I'm, I'm awake today. I hope I can use you today to please achieve my goals. Amen. That's what they thought they did. That's what they call devotion. To ease the guilt and then they begin their work. They do everything that they do. And then they come back and say, God, I don't know why you are not doing this. You have to do this. And then you will take the glory. We, we, we cap our self-centeredness with that statement. Be glorified. Be glorified is not just a statement. Be glorified is a state. Where you no longer are embarrassed about the outcomes of your life. The, the reason why you are responsible over them is not the fear of failure again. It's not the embarrassment. You have, you have, you have, you have died. You have died to your ambitions. It's about him. If koinonia does not work, it's no longer about Joshua Selman's ego to say, I will, maybe this guy is backsliding. Are you seeing? So the fear of being taught to be backsliding will now drive me to go and fast and pray and buy messages. I will think I am growing spiritually, but it's self-centeredness. That's why some of you came for koinonia this night. I know you love God. But the truth about it is that that's not the reason. Let me tell you how you know we are self-centered. Whenever we do not get our desires, our responses become ugly. Five minutes before your desire, you were trusting that the woman will not die. Lord, I know you. I take you by your word for your glory. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I am your servant. And then the person, the person dies. And all of a sudden, your ego is on the line. No, 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 no. Let's raise this person back to life. And you try and try and nothing happens. And your ego is on the line. I watch it happen to people. You prophesy to somebody, in the name of Jesus, you are going to get a job. And you see the pressure on you. Men of God prophesy like that and they go back and say, Oh God, please, let this word come to pass. It looks spiritual. It is your word. So you are in such a passion to bring it to pass. So that they can say, Apostle prophesied. And like he said, it came to pass. Is God helping us this night? Are you learning something? Self-centeredness. Brothers and sisters, are you seeing the damage it has caused to us? Sister, are you seeing that this is why, if you are not careful, you may not marry the will of God? Because although in your prayer you are saying, Lord, it's only your will, all that is talk. In reality, you have already painted the picture of the man, the necessary and sufficient condition to say yes to any man. You have painted it. It's unbending. No amount of preaching, no matter how pathetic, will move your mind. The hardness of your heart has been glued to that image. Must be a millionaire. 
then you now add and say and spiritual too just to make you feel so it no longer is about the will of God same thing for people getting jobs listen listen let me tell you don't laugh about this it's a very serious thing do you know why Jesus pleased the father it was not because of his miracles it was because he was a walking expression of a body that has been dedicated for the will of God to find expression unrestrained. Here are the things that Jesus said himself. Let's look at a few scriptures. Jesus himself said this. John 17 verse 1, please give it to us media. Let's hurry up. I want us to pray. John 17 verse 1. John 17 verse 1. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven. Father, the hour is come glorify now thy son many of us will stop there and then the next thing we we'll add is amen glorify now joshua selman give him money give him fame give him increase but jesus put a comma there and said that thy son may also glorify you in other words lord it's not necessary to have to use me to prove a point but simply because i am passionate about seeing your glory revealed use me as the vehicle for that revelation ha. there are things i know that can touch the heart of god are we together there are things i know by my experience with god that touches the heart of god more than faith believe me more than acting out spiritual things is a heart that is completely surrendered to glorify God. Jesus, look at Jesus. Who do being equal with God. Equal with God. I know what Jesus would have prayed at this point. Father, remember that our glory. Make sure you never forget it. I'm only here for three and a half years. I'm coming back. Make no mistakes. No new election in heaven. I am here. My position that I came to become a scapegoat doesn't mean you should take me for granted. I'm calling on you. You better answer me. Jesus submitted himself and said, glorify me so that you will be glorified. Brothers and sisters, this is the language of a life where Christ sits upon the throne of that personality. Do you know this is what Jesus came to give us? There's been a confusion in the body of Christ about Old Testament and New Testament. Let me tell you, if you meet Jesus today, he will never talk to you about Old Testament or New Testament. Whether you are under grace or law is nonsense. He's going to ask you one question. Who is seated at the throne of your heart? Jesus came to deliver us. The very gospel was designed to take us away from a life of self-centeredness. Not from a life of works. No from a life of self-centeredness the motivation behind our activities being us to a life that is glued to glorifying Christ brothers and sisters I don't care whether you are in the Old Testament or new you are not born again if Christ is not seated at the throne of your heart I don't care how many times you have recited salvation prayer the essence of the coming of Jesus is not just to bring a new order the essence of the coming of Jesus is to align men back to the purposes of the kingdom where Christ himself will be seated. The Lord gave me a revelation this morning. Both the elder brother of the prodigal son and the younger brother committed the same sin. The only difference was one executed it openly whereas the other one kept it which is an example of the two kinds of believers we have. Both of them were tired of the leadership of their father. One had the courage to express it. One kept it. They wanted ownership. And here's what the first one said. The first one said, give me. That self-centeredness there. Give me. I know you gave me access, but I don't want access. Because the access is in your name. I now want it in my name. Give it to me. The younger, the elder brother did not say give it to me, but it was in his heart. Listen, I'll prove it to you. 
when the prodigal son returned back and they were celebrating him what happened to the elder brother he became angry and this is what he said father i have served you all these years you have not even given me a small um you know a small animal cattle to slaughter for me and my friends you see the offense the self-centeredness was still there in other words lord i have served you will you not reward me see this is the imbalance of the doctrine of covenant that i always balance i've been insulted many times because of this i tell believers in terms of our personal work we are not in a covenant with god it's a relationship it is only when you talk about kingdom advancement and now bringing the operation of the principles of the kingdom then you bring covenant are we together because you see jesus gave a parable to explain that in the morning he saw some people idle and he called them to go and walk in the farm is that true he negotiated money with them that's covenant terms you walk i give you a denary later in the afternoon he saw some people idle and he said why sitters that idle he said no my employers he said go based on relationship they went because they loved him and they believed him there was no arrangement that he was going to pay them even till the 11th hour one hour to close time he still saw somebody he said go now when he started rewarding them see how he rewarded them he started with the covenant people since my agreement with you was one denary take and then he called those who went because they loved him and said since you were in this farm to promote my interest i will now decide what to give you and a person who worked for one hour received the same reward with somebody who started in the morning and the guys were angry they said no something is wrong and he said what you negotiated with me the same way you are saying lord i will serve you in ocean department my husband must come before koinonia ends thank you for that that's a covenant you will get the husband but what if god wanted to give you a husband plus an anointing and a destiny those two you robbed yourself because the motivation listen i know there are times we can tie things to god but brothers and sisters let me tell you the higher you rise with god it no longer matters whether you get results or not it now becomes his glory for your glory i will do anything to behold you as my king One more time. For your glory, I will do anything just to see you, to behold you as my king. I want to be where you are. John 4 34 Jesus said this John chapter 4 verse 34 Jesus said my meat is not to build a ministry he didn't say my meat is to prove that I am savior look at this do you know that every time they challenge Jesus about his his messianic persona did you see the way he was not under pressure to defend himself I know what I would have done, Joshua Selman. Ah, I'll tell media, make a montage and prove to these people, gather all the miracles that have happened and tell them, are you stupid? Is that not the power of God? But I mean, they met Jesus. The woman was caught in adultery. Jesus would have said, but you guys are foolish. Don't you know that I can do word of knowledge? In fact, the name of the husband, the name of the man that slept with her is Rabbi Benjamin. Where is he come out? And people will clap and say, my God. Hi, Rabbi, you are the one. But Jesus did not see a need for that. He was more concerned about that woman. But he answered them in a dangerous way. Instead of saying, I am the only one qualified to cast stones. 
he said he who has no sin cast the first stone in other words whoever among you fits that definition cast the first stone all of them left and she was left with the only person who was to cast the stone he said since i am qualified i choose to let you go go and sin no more that's jesus for you that's the jesus we try to preach about that we don't understand we shout and spit on people trying to preach him yet we don't pay attention to understand him are we together the essence of christianity brothers and sisters is not legalism and religion the essence of christianity is not even evangelism the essence of christianity is not heaven the essence of christianity is not prosperity and money the essence of christianity is not ministry and healing the essence of christianity is a life through the ministry of the holy spirit replaced from a life of self-centeredness to a life that is absolutely committed to seeing Christ enthroned first in your life and throughout every territory regardless of what your own achievement is while you do that is nonsense it's only secondary listen when you get this thing I'm telling you you will see the power of God in your life I can tell you this is why many people are not anointed I've said it the key to the anointing is not just fasting and prayer I've seen people fast for hundreds of days you fast with yourself at the center of your heart you have only succeeded in doing a good weight loss program I assure you you are not going to touch the anointing a heart that is dedicated to seeing his glory come okay Lord this is the lady I want to marry you. I like her. But thy will. Everybody say thy will. Be done. Say thy will. This is the language of a Christ-centered life. Lord, I want to go to London. It's always been my desire. However, I realize that my life is not my own. The Bible says I've been bought with a price. You don't act as if Jesus didn't finish paying for you. He paid for you completely. In fact, whether you are born again or not, you are still his property. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness therein. Right? So, whether through sovereign ownership or through the manifestation of the love of his son, you still belong to him. Listen to what Jesus said. My meat, this is what moves my life, my nourishment, my satisfaction, is to do the will of who him that sent me and to finish it i am more concerned about doing the will than enjoying any blessing that comes while doing the will so if in the course of doing the will of god i operate certain principles and i enjoy blessings while i'm wearing the nice suit while i'm driving the nice car my gaze is set on seeing him glorified so prosperity no longer has the power to distract me because i met it on my way to pleasing god whether or not i met it i am determined to still finish pleasing him so paul says what then shall separate us from the love of god look at this the apostle who brought himself back to life they killed paul immediately they went he came back to life and shook himself my god a man who wrote two thirds of the gospel this is what he said for for me to live is christ i don't know for you but for me to live is christ then even if i die listen paul was not saying if i die as a result of armed robbery and they shoot me if you die as a result of armed robbery it's not gain it's a loss because one you are going to hell number two the kingdom is not advanced through that but that paul was trying to say look my passion is to pour myself as a drink offering and regardless of what personal results come to me or otherwise it is secondary so compared to the fulfillment of God's program your marriage is secondary that marriage that has topped the prayer list of miracle service every week and then later the number 27 is now God your will be done 
exclamation mark after you have written everything and vented out your lust he sees he looks from heaven the Holy Spirit sees our motivations while we pray he's watching us while we do the things that we try to do he's watching us while we gossip about people you would think it's because of a passion to see them improve it's simply a system to show a weakness in them so that you can justify your own that you are not willing to hand over to the cross let me tell you if you want to love God he will love me for what I'm teaching you this night it's the key to make spiritual men a life that is completely out and you see some of us we come from cultures that the system of the culture by default makes you self-centered are we together we come from cultures where the system of the culture by default was designed to make you self-centered they look at you and say promise how old are you and you say uh, maybe I'm, I'm 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 32 or i'm 30 or i'm 35 and they say ah, you should have a car by now ah, what are you saying you should have a car and have a five children and this and then that challenges you and you go back and say lord they are insulting you god said they are not insulting me if they are insulting me i will react i'm not offended i said god me i'm offended i'm serving you <laughs> you see we create all kinds of theological messages let me tell you if he's the one taking the glory why are you taking the shame listen whoever is taking the glory should be the person taking the shame please help me why do you claim god is taking the glory but you always take the shame are we together take it half on me now see how we pack the shame and we claim that we are giving God the glory we are not there's a song in my spirit and the shout of the earth will be your praise God forever and the light unto all will be your wonderful name all the glory Lord is yours God forever, all the glory is yours. Listen, Lord Jesus, if I remain barren like this, I give you praise. I will never stop serving you, but it is your reputation. So let the pressure go to him. Are we together? The moment people look at you and say, are you a woman or a man? Direct the shame to him. But you sit down and absorb the shame and say, God, give me a man child or I die. And God says, this thing you are doing is not for my glory. It's spiritual. You are sincere. I'll show you why many people never get rich. They think the key is doing business. They think the key is after all of these things, God looks at your heart and says, no, sir. You are better off without it than you are with it because when it comes to your heart it will possess you and tear you so you see that it's not all about imparting anointing apostle I'm not seeing crowds in my ministry I know if you speak a word the doors will open and here I'm, I'm just looking at you in your sincerity but you dared your fellowship members that you are coming to collect power like a charm and say watch me when i come back you will see what will happen to this church your self-centeredness drove you for hours on the road sweating and praying feeling spiritual and you could not wait to see me the moment you receive that anointing whether or not you thought you received it you were in a hurry and you say from today don't play with me anyhow apostle laid hands on me see the picture aren't you surprised at what you call the sudden change when people get results they never change suddenly they only manifested it I told you the prodigal son did the same thing with the elder brother we keep I used to accuse the, the younger one and leave the elder brother but I found that two of them were only different versions of the same thing one was quiet with his own while the other one executed it hallelujah Luke chapter 22, verse 42. We are going to pray. I like us to read it. This was Jesus at Gethsemane. 
listen 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 there are two things here that we must understand we are going to read it but the first thing you need to understand is jesus had his own will it is okay to have your will it is okay to have your desires only that your desires must come under divine scrutiny and if need be give way for the will of god to prevail are you hearing what i'm saying now yeah your desires are only worthy of execution when they find themselves in harmony with the divine will of god if at any point your desires no matter how intelligently constructed if there is a difference from your desires and god's desires one must bow and for many of us largely it's been god's desires bowing so salary leads you to the job are we together you look at the lady and say kai i like the way this lady speaks don't you think she'll be a nice wife you see let me tell you something brothers let me give you a frank advice if you keep being carnally minded i give you two guarantees guarantee number one you will miss out on the will of god two you are going to pay for your foolishness when it has to do with marriage you have to take your eyes away from carnality and focus on god i saw that lady figure eight be careful be very very careful i know what i'm saying doesn't make sense to many of us but you ask many people who are sadly regretting missing the will of god there is no price that is too great to walk in the will of god father if thou be willing remove this cup from me here's the language of spiritual Find expression in our lives. Nevertheless, not my will. I have a will. I have a desire. But nevertheless, not my will. Lord, your will be done. According to my desire, I plan to own a house in every state in Nigeria. But Lord, I bring that will to your scrutiny. Does this fit in the master plan of your blueprint for my life? And if at any point it's not part of it, I drop my ego. I drop my ego. These are men and women who will be used by God in this end time. Let me tell you, those who will be used in this end time are not just those who understand revelations and mysteries. Because the Bible says knowledge will cease, prophecy will cease. Those who will carry strange mantles in this season are men and women who God can obstruct their life at any point without having no need to explain it. There are too many of us who put God like a defense. Lord, tell me why I should leave Zaria now. And we put our hands in our pocket. I'm waiting for you. And then you have to come and God says, all right, uh, take it easy. The reason is because... I have seen something I, said, I don't understand clarify when you make God that slow to birth his purposes through you there are dimensions he will never enter and the spirit drove Jesus he didn't say Jesus are you in harmony with me let's go to the wilderness you are going to get power there if you want God to explain to you the reason why he's doing everything in your life your life will be too slow for impact you have to start moving and let your mind catch up and say lord your thoughts towards me are thoughts of good and not of evil i don't have to wait until i understand you are too good to destroy me mm. you are too good to destroy me so whether you are in the valley of the shadow of death rather than sitting down and, and just talking and say god you self kai if i were an unbeliever by now i would have done something 
God, do you know it's because I'm a Christian that I'm here? It's not like I don't know where Babalao is. All those stupid statements that we make when we are under fire is a sign that the fire is roasting our self-centeredness. That's why the Bible says when we walk through the fire, you won't rush it. It has to burn off that dross so that when you come out like gold, the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Five years after marriage, no child, and people come. And you know, people are so naughty, they can say something and say, ah, Madam, you are serving God. What is all this one? At least go, go for koinonia now. Eh? Apostle is anointed. He can, is it pride? What is stopping you? And then after listening to those things, you can go back and cry and say, Oh God, give me a child or I die. No. You say, Father, a child or no child, let me tell you one truth, me and you. We are stuck to air forever. A child is too small a reason for me to put my relationship with you on the line. How many people have seen carry over and left God? They say, what, what is the use? The day I served God, I failed. When I didn't serve God, I succeeded. And you hear preachers stand on stage and preach nonsense. Nonsense! Is that all your life is about? Why do you compare your relationship with God with academics? Is it ever a match? Why do you compare your relationship with God with marriage? Why do you compare your relationship with God with a job? Is, is our self-centered mundane pursuit that reduce God to be equal with these things? God will never, I cannot reduce God to the issues of my life the petty issues of my life and say god you are uh, uh, me ask him ask him you are spiritual people will i ever open my mouth and tell god he's not faithful why that what happened just because there was no tea to eat you to tea to drink and bread to eat you carry the bible and run around heaven oh god are you giving me tea or I should tear my Bible? Is this your word? And God says, now nah, well, what is all this one? Just because of tea you are shouting? Self-centeredness. This is why the anointing does not work in the life of people. This is why God does not lift certain people. Inside, outside, online, you are hearing me and the Lord is speaking to you. Can your will bend to the will of God? Look at me. If your will cannot bend to the will of God, you are carnal. It's not an insult. It's a description. You are carnal and self-centered. Let me tell you how you know your will has bent to the will of God. When sacrifice no longer becomes an issue in your life. If God says, Joshua Selman, remove the sim in your phone now and give somebody this phone i don't say oh god see let's be real me i'm trying let me, I, I want to show you why many of us are carnal the ease with which you release things is a measure of how much you are self-centered and i'm not talking of small things your tongue singlet god says give you say, ah, after all i was going to even burn it so let me give this guy that's not giving god will never ask you to give what they gave you he will ask you to give what you worked for He's very smart. If he says, if he, he, look, let me tell you something. This our God is powerful. He will allow your emotions to be connected with the gift. Then he will ask you to release it. God will never ask you to release what you are not emotionally connected to. Because it doesn't make sense. The essence is not the giving. The essence is your heart giving him space to find expression. When Satan comes to you, he studies the things. That have not been surrendered to God that becomes his weapon of mass destruction in your life hallelujah let me tell you something I stand before the God of heaven and I lie not if the Lord asks me now and say son let this be your last sermon as Joshua Selman in the name of Jesus Christ the resurrected Lord I'm standing before him I will not lie to you when I drop this mic no committee council meeting will make me pick a mic again to preach. I will cry because I have a lot of passion for this. 
but I love him more than that. If you like, carry placard, bring back apostle, move around with it and say, no, you must come back. The demon that manipulated your mind, you must come back. I said, I understand, you are human. If I were you, I would do the same thing, but I'm not going back again. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, listen. I have laid down things in my life you will not believe. It's a price. Some of us, finances, whenever money is leaving you, even if you are keeping it, I don't mean you are giving it, just that you are keeping it's not in your pocket, you feel the pain. Just that is somewhere aside from your pocket. That is the apex of carnality, materialism, and self-centeredness joined together. God does not want your money. What does he do with it? God does not want your clothes. He wants your heart. Because when he finds your heart, he finds everything. Sisters, let me tell you why some of you are not rising at the pace you want. Your life is full of so much carnality. It's not an insult. You love God. But the truth about it is there are many shrines and idols in your heart. You have surrounded them so much you would dare not even allow the voice of God interrupt anything. Lord, don't come and interrupt my program. I have my life all planned out. Same thing with the brothers. That's why people are confused in Nigeria. They don't know what to do with their lives. They claim they are hearing God. They claim they are walking with God. But their lives are very clear that they are moved by insecurities and sociological pressures to show they are successful. Are we together? The quest to buy a car. The quest to get married. The quest to have children. You have all girls. And somebody is asking you, Ah, Kilo Day, we need girls and boys. So, and you now turn and land the warning on your wife. Say, Madam, you had that thing, please. I'm tired of this embarrassment. Oh yeah, let's pray. Lord, give us a child for your glory. No, give us a child for my ego. My masculinity is being insulted. And I want to use you to cure it. And God says, no way. I'm not that cheap. Brothers and sisters, this night, I want you to come to a place where the anthem of your life is nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. You find peace in your life. I like Job. Job lost everything in his life. As if that were not enough. You can lose any other thing. If you have your health, you are okay. He lost his health. Dogs would come and lick the source of Job. Do you know what that means? Imagine seeing Aliko Dangote on the streets of Zaria. And these dogs that roam around licking him. And then his wife standing by him. With a dark, dirty wrapper. And people look and say, Job, you? Where were the friends you helped? And Job sat down there and the wife was so attached to her reputation and she said Job curse God and die and Job said uh -uh, uh -uh. though he slay me though he slay me I know I've been embarrassed my ego has been stung till there's no ego yet will I trust him all the days of my appointed time I will wait until my change comes the three Hebrew boys said, Oh king, let it be known unto you that our God will deliver us. We know that there is a provision in him to deliver us. However, even if, aha, uh -huh, your faith equation does not call that one. You call even if doubt. Hey, nothing. My husband must come December. Lord, I tie you. I've sown seed. I am even taking communion. Please don't give God a headache with all these stories. Save yourself all that immaturity say Lord I give you praise I'm showing you the secret to peace there are men and women who have found peace you see them rejoicing and they are happy because they have found a system in God that it is more beneficial for him to be glorified than for your agenda to find expression it's not about the crowd it's about his kingdom it's not about Joshua Selman it's about his kingdom I bring you the message that represents the epicenter of the gospel that has been misunderstood even by preachers who preach the New Testament. What they preach in the New Testament is they say, okay, now there's no more works. Jesus has done everything. Enjoy. That's complete nonsense. It's an incomplete truth. 
the key is he brought you to a state where you no longer are self-centered the motivation behind everything you do is now for his glory there's nothing that gives my life joy as that name be that word be glorified lord be glorified it's my statement every time when i pray all i tell him is be glorified be glorified preparing for miracle service lord i thank you i love you with all my heart your people are coming they are trusting that you will use me and lord i thank you be glorified every time i stand on this stage and i look at you believe me i have no business trying to impress anybody his glory his glory that's why i do the things that i do we just rounded up our external ministration for the year and it's been a busy year sometimes while we are traveling when we're on transit i just sit down the last meeting was last week and we had to leave i think 4 30 in the morning to catch up with our flights to lagos and while we're going in the night i was saying what is all this why am i risking my life like this i didn't sleep i wanted to rest my head and the next thing it was time and i had to what am i looking for ministry am i so dull that i cannot write a book can't i do a webinar are there not intelligent ways to make myself omnipresent the internet has helped to make omnipresence possible i can be everywhere so what what the heck is all this traveling around and all of a sudden you just remember for his glory for your glory i will do anything just to see you to behold you as my king for your glory i will do anything just to see To behold you as my king, I want to be where you are, I got to be where you are, I want to be where you are. Listen, let me preach to you this night. Some of you, the load you are carrying is a demon that put it on your head. That load is not from God. The Bible says my yoke is easy and my burden is light your life is surrounded by too many self-inflicted worries worries that make no sense at the foundation of those worries is your self-centeredness and your desire to solve those problems for the sake of your ego but i bring you a message here's what jesus said come on to me it is a discourse with me come on to me all ye that are heavy laden and are weary he says and i will give you rest i will give you rest the worry in your life is killing you sister the worry in your life is killing you there are some of us who are older than our age they look at you and they say how old are you let me guess uh, 37 you say me i'm just 25 what what made that worry added an age that was not given by god you see people worry all the time they get up in the morning they are worried ah the bible says, which of you by worry can add one cubit this is scripture you know honestly speaking sometimes when 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 i drive around the road or when i stand i start laughing in the car i'm just laughing because i'm saying my god what made people like this how did people suddenly become like this you see a man quarreling somebody a conductor insisting that that five naira must be given and the person is refusing and then you stand somewhere someone is stealing they are catching him someone is cheating somebody in the market a lady is frowning her way to the market and you look at this and say my god who programmed us like this because when you die all these things end right now as i'm speaking an arm robber is trying to fly a fence he may die this night but he's thinking they are already calculating when you do this we will steal this one then we'll run out he may die this night that's his mindset when jesus says i will give you rest believe it there is a pastor right now who is not sleeping 
she's under pressure the messages i'm preaching are they new or are they still does it look like i'm growing pressure how can we multiply the members i already prophesied that we're going to have three times and now it's almost december we need like 1,000 more people. How can we do that? Your ego on the line. Forcing you to wake your leaders in the night. In the name of leaders meeting. But it's simply your ego on the line. Please rest. Prophesy to someone close to you. Say rest. Say it, rest. I bring you a system in the kingdom. Where men can hand over these self-inflicted problems. Look at this come sir if this guy is an arm robber watch this this is an example if he's an arm robber and you catch him stealing now i'm the policeman and i'm about, about to shoot him are we together the moment i shoot this guy and he falls to the ground is that an arm robber again that's not an arm robber are you seeing that's an innocent body that was controlled by nonsense for many years and understanding made that body jump a fence by force something else can come into that body and that body suddenly becomes a pastor it was never the body the body did not jump on the fence by itself a self-centered nature of wanting to be like the young guys too we are like the young guys the ones that have you see you see there's this craze among young people the ones who have made it let me see the designer you are wearing the watch how much hundred and how many thousand there is are you wearing versace or this and the other person said kai you see i'm tired of all this tailor tailor thing this guy that is sewing something suit is bending around i need to start dressing well and we put ourselves under pressure that's what some of you are doing now you promise yourself to wear a particular weave before christmas it's unnecessary that money can pay your rent your small house that you are you are paying unnecessary things listen please i want you to write this down the only thing that is worth your blood the only thing that is worth your blood listen to me is your relationship with jesus and if you are married your marriage write it down these are the only two things in this life that is worth your blood worth you waking up to not sleep the only thing that is worth your blood is your relationship with Jesus and if you are married, your marriage. Two things. They are the only things that the Bible places so much priority onto, even unto death. Thank you. Are we together? I think it was last week or the week before last. I sang a song I will sing it again when it's all been said and done all my treasures will mean nothing only what I've done for love's reward will stand the test of time Lord, your mercy is so great that you look beyond our weakness and find pure as gold in married clay, turning sinners into saints. And I will always sing your praise here on earth and ever after for you've shown me heaven's my true home when it's all been said and done you're my life when life brothers learn this don't be foolish husbands 10 years from now don't join the confusion of men who are punishing their wives and their children my ego my this all this nonsense that wrinkles men to death high blood pressure killing men they die of high blood pressure and what brought the high blood pressure is never solved oh i would never be that foolish never be that foolish Na 
This is what I'll do with my life. This is a part of the song that I really like. We'll raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We'll sing in honor of you. That's the reason why we are alive. Lord, we will raise your banner high. We'll shine your light so bright. We'll sing in honor of you. Prophesy one minute to yourself and say, I reject worry. Say it. I reject it. No. You came with culture, but I reject you. I reject self-centeredness. I hand over the management of my life to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Whatever God cannot do, cannot be done. No. Whatever God cannot do, let no man fool you that it can be done. Listen, listen, come. If God does not give you a wife, if you like wear suit, speak English, you can choose nonsense for yourself. The depression you are having, going online, wanting to like every lady, capturing people's pictures on your phone is nonsense. That self-centeredness on rampage, hand over that rubbish to God and rest. If God does not give you a husband, cut walk, jump, pray in tongues, cook, you will never marry until he gives it. A man can have nothing except it is given unto you. If God does not open access to wealth, do business, buy, sell, sell cement, sell sand, do anything. I assure you, you will never have this thing. In the kingdom, it's not an achievement. It's a trust. He said, my son, give me your heart. God does not anoint you. Try to start a ministry. You will be shocked that you are preaching well, yet nobody will come because it has not been given. Everything in the kingdom is given. Until it is released from heaven, you will never have it. The worry of men is killing them. Listen, listen. Because of the healing ministry, I study a lot about health. Do you know I have found out? I'm not a doctor. We have doctors here. But most of the disease, what we call it disease, people put themselves in an atmosphere that destroys them. I tell you, I have come to the conclusion that aside from demonic influences, all sicknesses all sicknesses are psychologically related depression when will you come and build a house in the village and you are under pressure you have one million naira that you would have used to plan your life but somebody has stimulated your egocentric nature and you go to the village you start building and die there have you ever gone to UK no 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 and you are putting yourself under pressure selling your car selling your wife selling your children to get the tp to go to uk and live like a fool at the borders go and see nigerians abroad see them under bridges when a student is here in nigeria and he's working they tell him no concentrate but when he goes abroad he can be scrubbing toilet and be schooling they say it's all right our carnal nature producing this nonsense we see in society let it change tonight please it's like a it's like something spinning men the moment you are born you enter into it it starts spinning you till death you can come out of it and you will be amazed at how people have been killing themselves by themselves i live a very happy life i'm telling you i live a very happy life when people look at me and say apostle the burden of the ministry i say me burden of the ministry you are joking i can be tired though physically speaking but maybe fatigued like frustration from ministry never anybody who tells you i'm ever frustrated in my life go and tell that person is a liar from the pit of hell i am a very very happy person whatever i don't have 
I keep it. When Koinonia started here, miracle service, I, I will wear a suit that can buy a bike and climb the bike. Are we together? I will climb the bike and it will come and there will be overflow of people here. I will drop from the bike and people are watching. Ah, this apostle on a bike. I mean, I don't have to sit down and tell myself, I know how many times a Jimmy can be a witness. I went to go and buy a car and God said, leave this place. There was a time I finished the arrangement. Can you imagine that embarrassment? Standing, you are happy, you are smiling, about to call your people and saying, I'm making it. And God said, what are you doing here? Your ego will not allow you to leave. You say, no way, God, collect it, I will buy. And you buy it and it never gives you joy. When you insist on taking what God did not give you, he will take back something he gave you. Write it down. When you insist on taking what God did not give you, believe me, he will take back something he gave you. We raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. Lord, I will raise your banner high. I shine your light so bright. I sing in honor of you. You know, you know, my people have learned a lot of things working with me because they travel. Do you know there are times we've gotten to the airport, we just get to the airport and because we arrived late, we've missed our flight. They have, they have learned this, that I don't worry. If someone calls me now and says, Apostle, your house is on fire, your car is on fire, everything is on fire, your bank is on fire, I will tell them, let me finish Koinonia. When I finish, I look at it, I say, okay, so what bond? There's nothing we can recover. Glory be to God. I give you praise. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'll go back and I'll sleep. To wake up and say, ah, my life. <laughs> no, I've grown up. You know what we say, I'll say, okay, in house, huh? it'll never happen. Never happen. I'm giving you the secret of rest. Some of you are surprised. Is it really true? Because it is never a reality you have come to conceive in your mind. You, are already, you have acclimatized yourself to worry. You never believe that there can be such a reality. It is your ego, self-centeredness. Self-centeredness. Please, please hear me. Hand over your life to God. I, I'm not, I don't mean born again. You keep hearing me say this. I, handing your life to God is not reciting salvation prayer. No. Coming to a point where you relinquish ownership. Lord, it belongs to you. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Nevertheless, not my plans, but your plan be done. Nevertheless, not my desires, but your desires. I know the Bible says he will give us the desires of our hearts. But brothers and sisters, he will only give you the desire that is consistent with his will. So you don't coin a desire by yourself and start imposing God using scriptures like a charm to turn his hand. No. The desire must be consistent with his will. Lord, do whatever you want to do with my life. It's yours. It truly is yours. I've told him this many times. Koinonia belongs to him. You can call me anything you want to call me. It's never my ministry. I don't have the power to run a ministry. It belongs to him. That's why he spreads it the way he wants and does with it things that are even more than my frame of wisdom. I imagine how depressed I would have been if I were doing ministry by myself and in my strength. I live a very happy life. Most times when we travel for meetings, they don't even know who Apostle is. As soon as we drop, most times I'm in my polo with my earphones listening to something and they walk to Mike and say, good afternoon, sir. And then they turn to Victor, good afternoon. And then they just see me and I can see the shock. This is the thing we have been waiting for, for hours at the airport. There is this treasure in earthen vessels. It gives me joy. Listen, it gives me joy when I decrease. Because the more I decrease, my problems decrease. The more I decrease, my worry decreases. Whoever is the landlord is the one who renovates the house. 
I, I, I mean let him let him handle everything he's not in me as a tenant he's in me as a landlord I give you the secret of peace quit the life of self-centeredness finances all of this I, I'm trying to do this keep your ego on the line if you ever seek prosperity let it be because you desire for his kingdom to come and mean it seriously and show it by how your current resources are advancing his kingdom if your 10 naira does not advance his kingdom your 1 billion will not advance his kingdom one gentleman came and met me and he said that um that he wanted to be to, me to pray for him he's a kingdom financier i said really he said by god's grace he wants to be giving maybe like 100 100 million to like 10 different ministries every month i said wow that's great and this guy came to my place he didn't even buy orange of 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 50 naira i i, I told him i said you will not be a kingdom financier as you can see that, that i am not looking for this but if you don't have the sense i am god's servant you believe i'm god's servant and you cannot buy orange of 50 naira right I see the shoe you are wearing. I see everything you are wearing. You come and you are twisting your tongue for hours, telling me you want to sow 100 million. Your heart is not giving. There's no giver in your heart. So you are not going to give. You are only a liar. And the money will kill you. If you even get it, sir, it's not even, you will not get it. At best, you will just be comfortable. God is not a fool. You can choose your way and die with it. But his way... Do you know as i'm preaching to you now when we begin to pray some of you will find out that certain sicknesses will just leave you because the foundation of you've taken panadol you've taken injection it has not left because the spirit that sponsors that thing is sitting on a mindset that is comfortable you hand over your life to god that's all absolutely that's all every time people ask you things you don't know the answer just tell them god be glorified god be praised Huh? when will you buy a car now you are getting too old for my liking we give God the praise God is going to step in just diplomatically laugh and leave them your mother calls you and say don't come back home if there's no if, if there's nobody you are going to introduce uh -uh. my child are you cursed what is wrong I am your mother oh yeah I bless you go and bring a husband mommy the Lord be glorified simple you enter your room and dance it away and dance it and let Satan see you rejoicing Huh? You are you are a graduate. You are you have masters. You even have PhD. No job. What is wrong with you? This other guy is a smoker and he's working in NMPC. You claim to love God, huh? and even I mean you cannot even get a job anywhere. Jesus, be praised, be glorified. Not in the name of Jesus. I will go about what kind of I'm tired of unbelievers mocking me. Let them mock. If you take the shame, what are you doing with the glory? He cannot take the glory and give you the shame. Whoever takes the shame should also take the glory. Rise up on your feet. Take over. Take over. I have come to the end of myself. Take over. Take over. I have touched the end of myself hallelujah hallelujah i have come to the end of myself hallelujah hallelujah i have come to sing it from the depth of your heart hey, hey, take over take over i have come to the end of myself Take over, take over. I have come to the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I have come to the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I have come to the end of myself. Prayer point number one, Lord. Take away this load from my life. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Take it away. This unnecessary pressure to prove a point. This unnecessary pressure is making me greedy. Is making me covetous. Take 
take it away from my life. Koinonia, pray. Lord, take this load. It's depressing me. I can't sleep because of it. I cry alone in the night because of it. I hand over everything to you. Pray, pray your way to freedom. Pray your way to liberty. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Listen. You are going to wage warfare in the next two minutes against all the traits that your self-centeredness has produced. Listen. Some of you have bitter jealousy. You love God, but if you ever see something that is not in you, you, you get resentful. Covetousness. High-mindedness. You crave for recognition. You will claim you don't, but it's written all over your life. Your appetite for recognition is to a fault. You may not directly go to look for it, but when they bring it, the way you jump at it shows you desire it. Are we together? What of lost? Lost. Your appetite for lost has driven you beyond imagination appetite for vain glory I am pastor this not brother this self-centeredness what of your desire to outshine others ladies you always want to be seen as a happening person it's a spirit you pride yourself in outshining others what of pastors the competitive jealousy that moves around men of God everybody trying to tear down another to show he is standing is self-centeredness what of all the religious activities done to command respect not just to glorify God prayers fasting look serious but motivated behind it is the desire for a name listen listen Nimrod Kush said go to come let us build a city whose top will reach the heavens and let us make a name for ourselves the issue was not the city the issue was the name everywhere the spirit of the antichrist manifested is sought self-recognition i'd like you to pray mention those attitudes mention those attributes and let them die in your life lift your voice don't be arrogant. Don't claim there's nothing to pray for. Selfishness. Lord, deliver me. Pray. Open your mouth and pray. Jesus, deliver me from lust. Deliver me from pride. I have a bitter and a wicked heart deliver me from it i don't rejoice at the progress of others deliver me from it i'm so obsessed by my desires i don't care who gets hurt on the way deliver me oh god are you praying i have paid less attention to the needs of people it's always been about me my opinion my desire what i want are you praying 
Hallelujah. Listen. You are going to pray for supernatural compassion that, listen, beyond your desires, you pay attention to the effect of your desires on the kingdom and on people. Don't want something so bad. You don't care who dies. Listen. Listen. Don't go to people's houses and inconvenience them and not care whether they are being inconvenienced provided your desires are met you must have a sense of empathy you don't go to a house their resources are about finishing and you don't even have the spirituality to say no even when they offer you some things there are some things the answer is no yes cannot be the answer to everything are you hearing what I'm saying? You must sustain the discipline. It cannot be give me, give me. Your hand is always open to collect. There are times, do you know? Do you know there are certain homes that sometimes, I'm not saying this is the general reason, but there are times I deliberately will not want to go. Do you know why? Especially some of our parents and loved ones. I will not go because I know how much they honor me. And sometimes they can be constrained financially. Are we together? And I know that attempting to go there, they will go out of their way. Maybe even borrow money to try to put things in place. And I say, no, no, no. Or sometimes I take them unawares. And I insist that they don't give anything. Maybe a cup of water just to bless the house. But some of you, I know that if you are functioning in this grace, people will lock their houses when they see you because you will inconvenience people. How many millionaires in many churches cannot testify? Because the day they just testify, I paid a tithe of one million. The pastor says, See me after service, the other office, not the regular one. And that man never rests. Text message all the time. We need chairs in this church. Is God speaking to you? Let me know if he's talking. All kinds of pressures. The discipline to have empathy for people. Don't want something so bad. You enter a room. You want to cook your food. You pour water on people's bed. That's it, the room. You are self-centered. You are more concerned about your stomach. You don't care what happens to any other person. There are husbands like that. They never pray. They never do anything. The day they are going to pursue them from the office, they organize night vigil. Everybody is seated at home peacefully. The next thing, you see one man of God who just enter like a thief and start singing around. And he'll call everybody. And nobody will sleep that night. Because the man has a problem. But when somebody is about to die, and they say, ah, my husband, let's pray. They say, no, 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 no. That's their business. Our society is full of self-centeredness. That's why many husbands never enjoy their homes. They claim they have experience in marriage, but their self-centeredness destroys them. Many wives, same thing. Many children, same thing. Self-centeredness fools the society. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, give me compassion to study the effect of my passion on others. To make sure that I not only receive results, but that I don't damage the destinies of people in a bid to get my desires. Lift your voice and pray. If I full empathy of the feeling of others, the Bible says, for we do not have a high priest who has not been touched with the feelings of our infirmity. Hallelujah. Listen, there are some of you after this meeting, you are supposed to send text messages to certain people and tell them, I'm so sorry. I never realized that my desire has been hurting you so bad. There are people you are supposed to send them text messages. Are we together? Yeah. So bad. They make their bed. 
you bring your friends and scatter their bed and you stand up and walk away you are so conscious about your desire you don't care about the feeling of anybody to hell with anything there are others your relationship too many people have suffered because of your own relationship you carry your wife or your husband to be to a house loot their food eat everything i mean come on there are others is their job don't let anything you have intentionally cause trouble and break people down it's not worth it when the election nigeria's election and the president now won jonathan did something i'm not a politician but he did something that touched my heart there were so many prophecies that had come that he will win from men of god who had had credible track records and the moment that happened he would have put his ego on the line and shed the blood of millions of nigerians but he said no his aspiration is not worth the blood of nigerians and he declined that for me is no matter what went wrong in his government that i seen on the cake has made him a man of honor and an international elder statesman the model of his concession is what is being used in many african nations right now leaders who otherwise would not concede and receive def defeat his life has become a template that's what happened when you create a sense of empathy don't say i want the shoe so bad if i must steal i will steal i want the phone so bad if i must remove the phone of the seam of my roommate to just ask please grow up don't put people in trouble because of your desires it's too selfish one more time you are going to pray and say lord help me i'm tired of self-centeredness now my eyes have been opened and i'm seeing how much because of my life so many people's destinies are almost been destroyed my gossiping around to explain myself has caused pain to all, too many people from today i receive grace to shut my mouth my blood mail has destroyed too many people i have joined the hands of the heads of good friends i have caused trouble for too many people it's not worth it i'm a child of god stony heart put a heart of flesh listen two prayer points and we're done the next prayer point you are going to pray and say lord let nothing aside from my relationship with you ever be a do or die in my affair in my life again let, let i will be responsible within the limits of responsibility but lord i declare that aside from my relationship with you and my marriage let nothing be a do or die affair in my life again to make me almost want to destroy myself to get it lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray believe me when i tell you nothing aside from the purposes of god is a do or die affair you will kill yourself for nothing hallelujah let's round up matthew chapter 6 please from verse 9 matthew chapter 6 please from verse 9 we're reading down to 13 keep standing if you can we're rounding up already let me teach you something you may have never seen after this manner, Jesus 
is teaching us how to communicate with heaven jesus is teaching us how to have an addiction for the things of god and this is what he says after this manner therefore in this pattern pray pray with this order of priority number one our father which art in heaven priority number two i reverence you in the eyes of jesus your reverence for god is more important than the forgiveness of your sins look at it after this man i pray you. Hmm. jesus is teaching here hallowed be your name that is the foundation for everything that i do i want to reverence you that is the reason why i will not go and smoke it's not just because i'm running away from hell no i desire that you be lifted hallowed be your name next verse your purposes are you seeing now this is your prayer the moment you reference the father the next priority is anything that will move his purposes look at this i hallow your name and i desire your kingdom to come your influence and that desire is only achieved when your will is done in the earth so he focuses on the will of god is that how you pray no your needs that's what you drum heaven with you sing one or two praise and worship songs for two minutes and yell at heaven but he's teaching us how to pray your kingdom come this is what i want next verse so that your kingdom can come effectively give us our daily bread the reason why i need daily bread is not because i'm hungry the reason why i need daily bread is because it's part of the tools that will empower me towards your kingdom coming i need to eat i need supplies in my life i need the millions and the billions so that i can be comfortable and create the atmosphere for your kingdom to come on that wise give us this day our bread next verse because i want your kingdom to come and i know that you are a holy god that my sinful nature can act as a separation between me and you forgive me our debts as i forgive others so the reason why i am asking forgiveness is not just because i want to run to heaven the reason why i am asking for forgiveness is because i dis i love him so much i do not i want to clear everything away that can stop his name from being hallowed and stop his kingdom from coming are we together 13 and lead me not into temptation give me discernment not so that i will be called apostle joshua selman give me discernment because if you lead me into temptation and my life is destroyed i will not participate in your kingdom coming and deliver me from evil there is a wicked devil there are curses and yokes there are witches and wizards there are covenants that are out to destroy lives lord i desire your kingdom to come but i'm also aware of these things so deliver me from evil and the summary of that prayer a reiteration for thine is the kingdom every power that is communicated is the power that comes for that kingdom and thy glory forever amen he said pray in this manner and your prayer will be answered when was the last time you prayed like that god give me a husband why god give me a wife why god give me a job why god wipe my tears why don't ask me that question god give me your word says so if you don't do it except you are not god and you say ah that's not a correct statement I'm God all by myself. There is nothing I ever ask God that the purposes of the kingdom is not tied to it. If the purposes of the kingdom is not tied to it, it is useless. Simple. It was God's servant, Bishop Oyedeko, that shared how that when the ministry started, great ministry now, touching people across Africa and the world. But then when they started, people would not just come pastor. For whatever reason, a very anointed man, signs and wonders, epochal revelations, but people would not come. 
And one time they were praying, engaging in warfare, intense warfare in the place of prayer. And the Holy Spirit asked him to come out. And he came out. And then after he had moved a distance, the Holy Spirit told him, turn and face, you know, look at the building and all of that. And then he saw a thick layer covering it. And this was what the Lord told him. He said, this is the stronghold that makes people to misrepresent your ministry. Everything you do, they see it in a bad light. And he commanded it to go and it left. And all of a sudden there was, there was explosion. Kenneth E. Hagin teaching on his encounter with Jesus. His book about his encounter with Jesus. He gave a very dramatic scenario that happened between him and Jesus. He said at a point when the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to him, Jesus was talking to him and was giving him some instructions. All of a sudden, a devil like an imp, a short devil, just appeared in between them and was jumping up and down, you know, distracting Kenneth Hagin. Kenneth Hagin said he thought Jesus Christ being there would stop that spirit from coming. Yet the spirit was there jumping up and down and Jesus kept talking. He seemed unaffected by whatever the demon was doing. But Kenneth Hagin was affected and Jesus kept speaking. Kenneth Hagin said it worried him for a long time until he got angry in his spirit. And the Holy Spirit gave him a strategy and he commanded that spirit. He said in the name of Jesus I rebuke you. And he felt and, and left. And this was what Jesus told him according to Kenneth Hagin. He said if you did not do anything about it I would not have done anything. All that it is to be done I have done. How can I is nonsense. The day you get up you the best way to predict your future is to create it create it create it don't sit down waiting for it to come create it listen i don't believe in circumstances i create any circumstance i want i create it the bible tells us that the word is framed 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 your world your environment your reality is framed by the word of god obadiah 117 it says and upon mount zion there shall be deliverance and holiness then it says the sons of jacob shall possess their possessions standing between the sons of jacob and their possessions are gates forces fraternities covenants of darkness that attempt to sabotage the liberty of god's people and then he says that there shall be deliverance. Deliverance is not falling down necessarily. It's not just manifesting and coughing out things. No. The context of deliverance is a platform that creates a separation on a legal basis between you and any force that keeps you bound. Are we together? There are things that have held our lives, brothers and sisters. And it must let us go. You must believe this. Don't sit down. I'm, I'm telling you this thing so you don't sit down and waste your time. I came with my spirit angry. We're going to deal with the issue of the fruit of the womb extensively. But then I want you to know the reason why the door has not opened is because there is a spirit sitting somewhere. And I tell you, if you let those spirits, they will wreck your life. Wreck your life. There are pastors whose churches have refused to grow. And they think they preach well. They are anointed people. They are great people. But they are all kinds of forces. Brothers and sisters, wickedness is real. The Bible tells you the whole world lies in wickedness. Don't say I didn't do anything to anybody. The condition to be vulnerable to oppression is that you are born. Once you arrive here, that's all. You, you are in the middle of a story that predates your existence. So as you come, you just join in the whole thing. Don't you think you have to come up with a fresh trouble? No. It is there before you arrived. Have you not seen children hated for something their parents did before they got married? And they look at you and while they are insulting the man, they say, who is this? You say, my name is David. Who's, you are his child. You are the idiot like him. You just inherited an insult. Just because you were associated with a man while they were making that trouble you were in the loins of eternity and now you came and participated
Tonight, I want you to believe God. I want you to believe God. Brothers and sisters, there's enough grace and unction for you to receive the miracle. I believe in breakthrough. Breakthrough is a mystery that gives men speed. Where limits are taken. Kabbalataya. Limits are taken. Limits are taken. Limits are taken. Limits are taken. I don't know what has held you down. You must break this limit. Don't sit carelessly looking. Some of you have some results. We all have different results. But is that the best? God can fast track your life. That between now and December 31st, he will put a new song in your mouth. A song of praise in your heart. He said many will see and fear and put their trust in him. Hallelujah. And time will fail me to speak of Gideon and Jephthah and Barak. Men who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought the mouth of, of lions. Shut the mouth of lions. Wrought righteousness. Let's look at one scripture. Romans 4, 18. I just want to touch a little on this issue of believing and faith. We just finished a series on faith. Please, I encourage everyone as God grants you grace. Make sure you get those series and listen to them. But I just want to challenge our faith a little even as we prepare to pray. There's such a strong anointing in this place tonight. Jesus. Hallelujah. Such a strong anointing. I'm hearing footsteps. That's what I'm hearing in my spirit. Footsteps. And the Holy Spirit is telling me he's the one walking to people's lives. I'm hearing footsteps. No, 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 no. I, I believe me. Just, just, just believe me. Just walk with me. I'm hearing footsteps right now. God will not let me continue. He's walking to someone's life right now. Right now. I'm hearing footsteps in the spirit. I'm still hearing footsteps. And the Holy Spirit is telling me this is his footsteps. He's walking to someone's life. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus. I don't know where those people are. But right now their stories must change. Must change. God is not even waiting for me to finish preaching. Something is happening here. A change of story. Something must change. Something must change. Something must change. Something must change. Something is happening right now. How forcible are right words. Footsteps. I still hear these footsteps. I still hear these footsteps in my ears. And God is saying he's giving people testimonies. It's like the spirit of God walking. Walking. He will meet you where you are. He will meet you where you are. Shabala rabala rabala. Sit down. Sit down. Let's finish up. Romans 4 verse 18. Just sit down. The waters has been stirred. I just want to give you an understanding on faith. You have a role to play. Listen please. You have a role. Don't worry about what is happening. You have a role to play. Please hear me. You have a role to play. You have a role to play. You're not going to sit down and just expect to be healed. You have a role to, be, to play. Lift your hands, gentlemen. You raising your hand. I see an angel pouring oil on your head. That's what I'm seeing right now. Something looking like oil. That's what I see. I don't even know you. But in the name of Jesus Christ, receive that anointing right now. My spirit is fired up. I feel this thing on me now. I feel this thing on me now. I feel this anointing on me now. I feel this thing on me now. Shake It's the anointing that comes with the office. I feel it on me right now. A lady with a breast lump 
a lady with a breast lump has just been healed right now check yourself check yourself a lady with a breast lump the left side of your breast 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 the, of your breast. the power of god is touching you right now the power of god is touching you right now the power of god is touching you right now the power of god is touching you right now the bible says who against hope against hope have taught us against hope means in spite of the obstacles believed who against hope i told you the starting point of faith is the presence of an obstacle it is not unusual to see obstacles there is a system to take care of them that system is based on your conviction backed up by understanding that compels you to take action the name of that action is faith not the name of the believing believing is not faith believing is restful confidence based on an understanding the end product of believing is conviction when you act it the name given to that action is faith listen you can hear the most anointed word if you do not mix it with faith be convicted that this is the word of God and then be ready to take steps so if you are here and you cannot stand be ready to stand don't just sit down saying well let's see what will happen you will go back home on that wheelchair you are deaf you are blind whatever it is genotype whatever make sure you are anchoring your spirit a door has refused to open make sure that you receive there are many faith actions praise and celebrating god is an action that's how you water whatever you sow listen jesus said and i've corrected it here i've taught us he said if you have faith as a monster seed i've told you it's not the size if you have faith and your faith works like a monster seed a monster seed is sown that means if you can plant your faith and create an environment for it to grow in the similitude of a monster seed then you can say to this mountain it was not talking about the size of faith if you have faith and you have understood how to make it operate like a monster seed then you will do great things Are we together tonight i want you to refuse that any force of darkness holding your destiny will go back with you i want you to refuse listen listen there is grace for increase i feel it in this place i, I just want you to believe me you know sometimes it's difficult communicating things to people because some we live in an environment of such unbelief i know the grace for increase listen increase is an unction honor is a mantle it can come upon a man you can carry it bodily don't sit down and just waste your time you may not be sick in your body but there is an encounter that produces a possibility upon your life listen i told you creation has never been disobedient something on you or not on you is what compels the response of creation an anointing is like a mantle it works like a charm when it is upon your life that anointing speaks is a language it will make creation respond to you in a certain way that's what you call favor that's what you call breakthrough don't sit down asking can i get a job that's a very foolish question very foolish question don't sit down asking can god make a way in the wilderness my god my god my god ah Don't sit down asking, can I get the child? No. What you should be asking is, can I get the twins or triplets? Not, can I get the child? Are we together? You are here tonight because you are trusting God to do something in your life. Face the business that brought you and be serious. Don't sit down laughing at others, criticizing others. Others will be taking radical steps of faith. Don't sit down there being cynical, laughing at them no connect and open up your spirit man of god open up for your ministry there can be more there can be more there can be more 
The pressure of ministry will kill you if you continue going the way you are going. There is a system that builds you out. Even favor, let me tell you, this favor that we think is very free, there are laws. There is an unction that brings favor. It is a manifestation of favor that is effortless. But there is a system, an exact system, a science to its coming into your life. Hallelujah. Don't sit here and allow the over 40,000 or so people following online who are receiving and getting blessed and their lives are changing and you are here seated and you are wondering, can God change me? Are you not seeing? Don't you see his signature all over? Listen, there are three platforms for us to receive in the kingdom. I'm rounding up now. There are three platforms for reception. I've taught this, but let me just touch it quickly. The first platform for reception is an encounter with the presence of God. When you meet God, the presence of God alone, listen, will leave certain deposits. It's like an intercourse between a man and his wife. There is a transfer. So when you meet God, there is a deposit. Listen, the second platform for reception is through your understanding and your application of the principles of the kingdom. There are dimensions of the power of God that has been vested in laws. You don't have to pray. The moment the laws are accurately um, operated, the power is released immediately. You don't have to be a Christian. But the third dimension, listen, the third dimension of reception is by tapping into the covenant a man has with God. Listen. Men enter covenants with God that represents platforms for certain possibilities to find expression. Either through their personal press or through the office they represent and the possibilities it brings. Listen to me. You will never touch prosperity ignoring Abraham. Abraham entered a covenant with God that became the platform to see that dimension of God work in your life. There are men today who have covenants with God answers to prayer is not just by their personal faith their altar is a mystery and others can tap into that mystery to honor and receive results that are above and beyond your current level of believing god when when saul came where samuel was just that atmosphere implicated him he prophesied all kinds of things happened to him You need to understand that territories, human beings represent systems in the kingdom. And not there are certain audacious statements that when God makes, he's not just waiting for your personal faith. He creates the platform for receiving those miracles upon a covenant. Are we together now? God entered a covenant with Abraham. Is that true? And then Abraham slept with Hagar and then had Ishmael. Is that true? They were at the wilderness crying. Two of them were crying. God only had the cry of Ishmael. Why? Because Ishmael was Abraham as far as the covenant was concerned. So God could not listen to Hagar, but he had the voice of the Lord crying. And because of that, he came. Let me tell you, this ministry you see like cobwebs, is an encapsulation of mysteries and covenants mysteries and covenants agreements with God that become the platform for certain possibilities to happen I want you to leverage on those advantages and cheaply tap into certain things tonight you are not alone there is grace for you rise up on your feet you are mighty in this place You are mighty in this place. You are mighty in this place. Faithful God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are mighty. You are mighty in this place. You are mighty in this place. Say na 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 na. You are mighty in this place. Faithful God. 
Before we begin to minister, I want you to lift your voice and tell God everything you desire for Him to do. Don't keep quiet. Don't say God knows. Open your mouth. Lord, step into my finances. Lord, step into my business. Lord, step into my family. Faithful God. Hallelujah. Se que para da bato sobra de bala da Lord take away the barrier that is stopping my doors from opening Take away the barrier oh God stopping my influence enlarge my coast pa pa ta ya ba Se que tele catara ba 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 prayers Lord I must take my testimony tonight I'm tired of this fibroid it dies this night this night it must go this night not tomorrow Lord favor must land upon my life I'm tired of struggling Favor must come upon my life. Sikepa go soto bakata. Those online, make sure you are praying. The anointing of the Spirit will reach you where you are. You reign, you reign, hello, him, you reign.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is starting tonight with an impartation. Don't bring them out. I am seeing the Lord speaking to me. And he's saying there is an unction for divine strategies. And it's coming on 21 people. 21 people. I stretch my hands right now. I stretch my hands right now. Receive that impartation. 21 people. Divine strategies. The wisdom of God. Receive it. That idea. Kato Sotoya. Divine idea. Someone has been praying. Lord, show me the way. Here it comes. The anointing brings it. Help them, please. The anointing brings it upon your life. 21 people. The Lord shows me. 21 people. An impartation. Supernatural strategies. Hallelujah. 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 I'm going to begin to minister now. But the Lord, the Lord is speaking to me. Listen. Listen. The Lord is speaking to me. And this is a mystery. God wants to use two people for a prophetic word. Two people. Listen. Two people for a prophetic word. Two people. Play mic. Something supernatural is happening. Ah. The Lord is taking me in the spirit and I'm seeing a map. Get ready, please. I'm seeing a map in the spirit of Nigeria and I'm landing in Kaduna state. I see an anointing touching Kaduna people now. Right now, right now, right now. By the spirit of God, Kaduna state. Kaduna state. I see an anointing, only Kaduna state. Shabarapakata. Embreketeta. Kaduna State, a miracle happening for Kaduna people. Southern Kaduna, Southern Kaduna, there is an anointing. There is an anointing. God is bringing breakthrough and deliverance. Breakthrough and deliverance. Breakthrough and deliverance. Breakthrough. Hallelujah. I don't know why God does this. Brothers and sisters, don't ask me. Don't ask me. This is an operation. It's called the Ministry of Signs and Wonders. Now I see Benway State. Benway State. I see an anointing on Benway State. Now, an anointing on Benway State. Benway State. Shaka Toda Parata. Reketekete. Help them, please. Benway State. You can't stand it. You don't have to know whether you don't know your state. Benway State. Miracles. Miracles. Go into Benway State. I hear or to go in the spirit. A miracle happening right there. Right there. All those connected to that bloodline. There is a miracle for you right now. Don't trivialize what is happening here, brothers and sisters. These are territorial breakthroughs. Territorial breakthroughs. Hallelujah. 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 I'll pray for Stephanie. 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 I'm hearing a name, Stephanie. Please, let's save time. Who is Stephanie? You're like a red dress or something like that. Stephanie. Who is that? Stephanie. There is a Stephanie I'm seeing. I will pray for you, but I'm seeing someone. And in the vision, the Lord is showing me it's like a red dress, but I'll pray for you. Lift your hands. The Lord says, I should tell you witchcraft ends in your family. Witchcraft ends in your family. You will hear testimonies that will surprise you. Right now, I stretch my hands towards you. Now, it ends by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Johanna. Johanna. 
Johanna. I'm hearing a name, Johanna. Please save our time, Johanna. I don't know who that person is. Johanna, I won't continue speaking like this because we have to be fast. Johanna, 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 Johanna. Whether you're here inside or outside, Johanna, Johanna, Johanna. There is a lady following us from Lagos. Your name is Blessing. Your name is Blessing. You are in a room. You are following from a laptop. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, He's bringing an end to the captivity of your family. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, He's bringing an end to the captivity of your family. He's bringing an end to the captivity of your family. Hallelujah. Now lift your hands. I want to pray. I tell you, I feel fire in this place. It's time to command deliverance. It's time to command deliverance upon the forces of darkness that have tied our lives. Forces of darkness. The Lord is bringing deliverance to your family. Your family. The Lord is bringing deliverance. I'm seeing a plot of witchcraft over his family. And the Lord is bringing deliverance right now. Right now to the family. Right now to the family. The Lord is bringing a major deliverance to the family. A major deliverance to the family. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. As I begin to pray for you. All those devils that has tied the lives of people. It doesn't mean you are possessed. It's not an insult. You may not even know. You may be minding yourself just like you're standing now. I'm going to command those devils. They must go. They are not only going to live your life. They must live your family. Are we together? Listen. Some of you brought many prayer lists. Just one spirit living will produce all that testimony. Believe me. Believe me. Lift your hands. My heart, my soul, I give to you. I bow to you, my Savior and King. Lift your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Father, thank you for your anointing to deliver, to set free. There are spirits in this place sitting on the lives and the destinies of people. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, they must go. I want you to bring them out now. They must go. They must go now. At the count of three, I want you to shout the name Jesus. You'll be surprised to see what happens. Kai, 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 Kai. I see spirits of delay. 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 Spirits that have held men down. All kinds of spirits. Father, in the name of Jesus, at the count of three, Lord, as your people shout, may this shout reverberate in the realm of the spirit and may it bring breakthrough 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 flowing sound my flowing sound in the name of Jesus one two three shout Jesus now I command those demons go now go now go now Kato Sotoba lift your voice and begin to command every spirit every devil help them please go now I command every spirit of witchcraft that has tied the lives and the destinies of people. You must go now, inside and outside. I command you, inside and outside. Bring them out. I command you by the power of the Holy Ghost. Lift your voice. I command you. You must go now. Now, by the anointing of the Spirit. Release their destinies. Release their destinies. Release their breakthrough. Lift your hands while you pray. Atasileka prosuto pariata katusha. Prende kabrato soko tu baleyakata. I'm seeing gates and I'm seeing chains on them, and the Lord is saying to unlock those chains. Unlock those chains. That anointing will come on certain people right now. Father, I decree and declare in the name of Jesus, wherever they are, any place in your life that has been chained and tied right now in Jesus' name, I command those gates be open, be open, be open, be open, be open. Be open. 
by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Shake it, take it, take it, toss it, toss it, chains, chains, be broken. Ushers, please, chains, be broken. In the name of Jesus, chains, be broken, be broken. Kalapatoshaya, release their destinies outside. The Holy Ghost is touching people outside. I see a wind of fire touching people by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Every enchantment, every enchantment, every witchcraft against the lives of people, against destinies, you must go now. Mr. Man, lift your hands. This man, lift your hands. The Lord is saying, I should tell you that your breakthrough begins this night. Right now, receive that anointing. Receive that anointing right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bring them out. I'm hearing the name Charity. Charity, we have to be very fast because I want to focus on barren people right now. Charity, Charity. 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 I'm hearing the name Charity. Charity. The Lord wants to bring breakthrough for Charity. The second overflow. There are two people God is touching there. The second overflow. I see the anointing coming on two people. The overflow. The roadside. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, listen. Something is going to happen here. Now, ushers, I want you to be sensitive. I'm going to pray for certain people. You will have to help them. The grace for speed, listen, is going to come on some people. Physically, they will find themselves trying to run, help them. So that it's not like they won't be able to control themselves. It's a prophetic act by the spirit so that they don't enjoy anybody. Lord, in the name of Jesus, guys, be sensitive, please. In the name, help them, please. It's already happening. That's the instruction God is giving me. An anointing will come on you physically. You will begin to demonstrate your breakthrough. Right now, Lord, I release that anointing. Give men speed. Give men speed. Give men speed. 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 By the power of the Holy Ghost. Give men speed. Kato Sotobaya. Run like Elijah. Help them. Run like Elijah. Help her. Help her. Run like Elijah. Run like Elijah. Grace for speed. I release it. I release it. From my spirit. I release it. Grace for speed. No more stagnation. No more retrogression. Run with the grace of Elijah. Overtake the chariots of Ahaz. Hallelujah. Charity. Charity. Are you married? The Lord wants to give you two miracles. Huh? Number one, God wants to settle you maritally. Do you believe that? Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. Second, what are you doing? I just finished school. I'm a graduate now. Huh? I'm a graduate now. You are a graduate? Yes, sir. I'm looking at you and I'm seeing Abuja. Huh? Yes, sir. Abuja? Yes. What is Abuja? I have a fiancé. Yeah, you have somebody there. Yes. Sir. That's the person to marry you. Okay, Did you sir. tell me? No, sir. Did you tell me? No. That's what I'm telling you. I'm looking at you. I said God will settle you Amen. maritally. Amen. Huh? And then God will give you a job. Amen. Supernatural job. Amen. Because it's your desire. Amen. God will give you a job. Amen. The Lord is saying I should prophesy to you. I'm opening a new chapter over your life. The past. Uh -uh, your future has to change. It, the, what the past is, is not a good testimony. And the Lord is saying, I'm giving you a new chapter. 
a new chapter come my dear in the name of jesus god is giving you a job may he connect you maritally huh is your name charity is your name charity in the name of jesus christ i pray for you delay ends now delay ends now i pray for your auntie let there be a miracle in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ i minister to one more case before i pray i want to pray specifically for barren people i'm going to pray that before we do a lot of other things before we call the sick out thank god there are many hands today and so we're able to do a very quick walk ladies when i count three just shout i receive don't worry follow me and do my stupid thing are you ready now one two three <laughs> There is an opening. There is an opening in the realm of the spirit. There is an opening in the realm of the spirit. Many people are entering it. I see it. It's a door of breakthrough. There is an opening in the realm of the spirit. There is an opening in the realm of the spirit. Shalom. Jehovah Shalom. Shalom. You're mighty in this place. Shalom. Jehovah Shalom. Shalom. You welcome in this place. I tell you, if, if God would open your eyes to see the breakthroughs that I see being released to people in the realm of the spirit. Doors, strange doors. I told you there is grace for increase. There is grace for increase. There is grace for increase. The language tonight is more, 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 more. There is more, more anointing, more grace, more unction, more wisdom. There is more. There is more in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please drop your hands. The Lord is leading me to pray for brothers. Lift your hands. You'll be surprised to see what will happen to you now. Hmm. The Lord wants to release grace for establishment. Listen. There is such an anointing. Don't be foolish. Receive it. Receive it with all your spirit. There is a spirit, especially in this side of the north. Men get established very late. Very late. Very late. You make money late. You build a house late. It's a bad spirit. God wants to release something. Those online you can follow. I want to pray. I see this thing falling on many men. Jesus, it is your word. You have released this word. I put authority upon this prophecy. And I declare, let it enter like an arrow into the life of men. Right now, take it. Receive that grace right now. Receive it in the name of Jesus. At the count of three. One, two, three. Take it now. Take it now. Help them. Grace, grace. Strange establishment. Doors opening. Doors opening. In their own accord. Help them. Doors opening. I put you in a platform spiritually. Where you experience speed and establishment. In the name of Jesus, help them please so they don't enjoy themselves. My God, be established, be established, be established, be established. I lose your hands, I untie your hands. Every brother here, I untie your hands. Be established by the Spirit, be established by the Spirit. Go and buy that land. By the Spirit, go and build that house. By the Spirit, I open strange doors. Don't say you are too young. It's an anointing. It's not your effort. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Hallelujah. Now leave those who are standing here very quickly. If you are here specifically, please listen. You are here specifically trusting God to stamp the feet of Satan in your family over the issue of children. You know, God announced beginning of October that the theme for this miracle service, you've had the testimonies. Please don't say they have prayed for me before. Don't allow that unbelief destroy you. Are we together? While you are coming, there is a lady who will shout under the anointing. It is the grace that will release this grace for fruitfulness. It's a loud shout. It will be loud enough for everyone to hear. By the Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we give you praise. That's the shout there. That's the shout by the Spirit. There is an anointing to pray for the barren. Come, please. All those, whether man, woman, if you are married. Look, don't come out here if you are not married. Why are they here? Why are they all here? You must be married. Except if you are standing in for someone. Don't stand here doubting. There is an anointing. I see a river. Some of you as you are standing right now, the power of God will come on you. Just before I even start praying. Look at this. Will you open up the gate? Open up the door. Will you open up the gate? Sing one minute and sing it from your heart. Will you open up the gate? The gate. Open up the door. Open up the gate. The gate. Listen. I will to pray for you by myself that's the instruction i will do it very fast you don't have to tell me any stories i don't care what they said low spam count um infertility i don't care the report as you receive that touch if you are standing for someone call them let them know you are praying for them are we together now don't just say i receive and then you stand there let the people know what god is doing i'll have to do this very fast after that, we'll pray for the sick generally. We have a lot to do. Don't lose touch of this. Don't come for koinonia and then sit down. This is not a museum. Let your heart be connected. Because there are different things happening in the realm of the spirit. I'm going to be very fast. I'm seeing... Listen. I'm seeing something like a bird. is jumping out of a lady now. One person here. I don't know who that person is. But the Lord is asking that until that happens... Uh, like a bird that's what i'm seeing father in the name of jesus who is that person let there be that miracle right now it's like something will just leave you just leave you just leave you and release you and release you by the power of the holy spirit now as i pray for you many of you strange things will happen some of you are standing for other people but as i pray for you god is securing something in your life you don't have to come out please if you do not belong to this category that's the lady i'm talking about now i'll pray quickly just give us um uh, uh, keys just play something very quickly father in the name of jesus let everyone here return with a miracle child no matter what the spirit is no matter what the issue is fibroid infertility low sperm count whatever i don't care what the name is it must live right now in the name of jesus please shift very quickly as i lay my hands on you it is done receive that grace receive that grace receive that grace now go and carry your miracle child madam carry your miracle baby carry it now carry it now my god i tell you i see babies literally in the realm of the spirit carry it now carry it now carry it right now carry it right now Miracle, 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 miracle. Shata da 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 balada. Rekete kete kete. There is an unusual grace here. 
There is an unusual grace. Unusual grace. Unusual grace. Unusual grace. As I lay my hands on you, it is done. It is done. It is done. It is done. Heal now. Open up the gates in the name of Jesus. Grace. 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 Shabalada Grace, grace, grace. Help them, please. Let's save time. Grace. Receive your miracle, baby. My God. My God. Testimonies. Wombs opening. Fertility be restored. Receive it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. In the name of Jesus. Bring it. Please. In the name of Jesus. 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 Return with the miracle child. 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 No barrenness. Out. Out now. Release her now. Now. Out. Out of her. Return with your child. Miracles. 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 In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing twins in the realm of the spirit. The Lord is showing me twins. Somebody is carrying twins. Out. Let her go now. I command that spirit. Release her in the name of Jesus. Release her right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Let it be open. In the name of Jesus. Grace. 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 Shebara do bara 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 bara. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Eko to shebara do bara. The Lord is healing irregular menstruation. Irregular menstruation for one woman is being healed right now so that you can carry your baby receive your child out out of her now return with your miracle child now miracle child miracle child Jesus, in the name of Jesus, it ends now, 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 by the power of the Holy Ghost, let her go now, keep praying in the spirit, don't just watch, miracles, 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 in the name of Jesus, Jesus. Supernatural miracles. The Lord is anointing you. Receive that anointing now. The mighty name of Jesus Christ. Grace, grace, grace. Grace for you. Grace for you. Grace for you. Grace for you. Grace, 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 grace. Open. Open now. Open now. I see a womb that is closed. Open now.
while I'm praying for you, I want a woman to come up. Yes. I'm seeing a woman who is pregnant. You have been having nightmares. Somebody comes to you in the night. You have you even wake up shouting. You've not been able to sleep. There is a pregnant woman here with that situation. God wants to set you free. Please, where are you? If you care for you, can come and God will set you free right now. You are pregnant, but I'm seeing you having very bad dreams. Like a nightmare. Madam, look at me. You are standing for yourself. For someone. Ah, hallelujah. Kai, I'm seeing something that is not nice. I need to pray for a lady here. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed. I don't know if you have the courage. If you have the courage, I can pray for you. Please don't be embarrassed. This is a family. Something like a living thing. It almost looks like a physical living thing. Like a worm or like a snake. Literally comes out of your private part. It comes out and goes back. This is like a, a living, a real object. Please who is that? I have to pray for you. Like I said, if you have the courage. There's nothing to be ashamed. What, who is this one? Why is she here? coughing out no 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 don't bring her in jesus name you're okay come in jesus name it is done the lord sets you free by the power of the holy spirit i need to pray for that lady honestly this is a serious thing in fact it's not just one i'm seeing two of you come and stand here something it looks like a worm but it's bigger than it you see it it comes out and goes back on its own who is that you're the one god bless you for your courage can you celebrate her don't be afraid see look let me tell you this is this is like a spiritual hospital so this is not a place immediately i saw it even me i honestly i my body was doing me one kind but i thought you have to say this is bad it's like a doctor madam Kai. and you love god oh. don't be afraid huh do you know this thing where are you from because I'm looking at you, you are supposed to be a very great woman. I look at you and I see somebody. Ah, this is strange. I'm seeing, let me show you what I'm seeing. I'm looking at this and I'm seeing witchcraft from Delta State. I'm seeing you, but I'm seeing a white woman. I'm seeing a white woman, but I'm seeing you. And the Lord is telling me that you speak like a white woman. That's the vision that I'm seeing. Say, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. I didn't know that. Look at me. My dear, look at me. Because I'm seeing this. You look far, far, far older than your age. Somebody even see you and say, Mommy, there's no mommy anything. You need prayers because you too, are you married? You are trusting God for a life partner. It's even why you came here. Look at this. The devil is a liar. See, I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus Christ. The spirit of the waster. That will want your life to keep going without achievement. I'm praying for you now. May that devil live your life forever in the name of Jesus. The spirit of a waster lives your life forever in the name of Jesus. I use her as a point of contact. This is a nice woman. She didn't bargain for this. And she loves God. Are you seeing that now? Who knows, probably you were trained by white men. Or she speaks very intelligently. But everything grounded. Hold my hand, man. To a point that, that, do you know what it means? Another object, did you plant an object in your body? Comes out through you at will. Goes back at will. For those of you who think witchcraft is not real, you are joking. You are watching one right now. Not pile, oh. I'm not talking of pile. Hold my hands, my hands. I'm angry in my spirit. In the name of the Lord God that I serve, I speak to you from the depth of my spirit. Right now, I command that devil, let her go now. Out! Out! In the name of Jesus, I lay my hands on your stomach. I command that wicked spirit, whatever your name is, don't only leave her, pack your load with you. And go out of this woman's life. 
I restore you even physiologically in the name of Jesus Christ this old face is not your own you are not that old I change it in the name of Jesus Christ help her give Jesus praise father thank you supernatural miracle supernatural miracle supernatural miracle supernatural miracle in the name of Jesus Christ hold my hands it's over over in the name of Jesus over in the name of Jesus it's over in the name of Jesus there's one mama here the anointing of the spirit is going to come upon you for praying for barren people there's one mama here I'm seeing in a vision the power of God will land on you 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 may not even be expecting it not everybody this, this is an, like an elderly woman but I'm seeing an anointing right now wherever you are father something will land it's like fire it will land on one mama now supernatural grace you will start laying hands on the sick oh that's the woman there help her help her please bring her here supernatural anointing supernatural anointing for the for barrenness look at this look at this this is an elderly woman for god's sake Shera tabaroto koto baradia, lembra bata tatsoketia, ekara takata latotia. Father, take her to that level. I stand upon this apostolic and prophetic grace, and I bring you to that realm. Release miracles to women in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, please help her. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Supernatural. Supernatural. Daddy. Why is he here? Why is our daddy here? Who brought him out? You came on your own, sir? For barrenness? You? Where is your wife, sir? He's here, but I can't locate her. Madam, come. You will see a man like, hold my hand, sir. You will see a man like this and think he has a child. You have a child? You are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Yes. How old are you, sir? Don't be embarrassed. You are 57. You will still have your child. Where is your wife? Wife? Is she here? Is the wife here? She's not here. You are not sure. She's around here. You are sure she's around? Yes. Madam, if you are around, please, I want to pray for you and your husband. Otherwise, um, we can just pray and continue, please. So that we don't waste time. In the name of Jesus Christ, supernatural grace. Supernatural grace. You can imagine the kind of oppression. Supernatural grace. Supernatural grace. Supernatural grace. Your wife is not here. She's not coming out. Or is she under the anointing? Huh? Whose name? Maybe she doesn't want to come out. I hope she's not. She's here. What's her name, sir? Esther. Esther Atuluku. Please, you have had your name, madam. That's your husband calling you. Can you rush, please, so that we save time? Is she here? Is she outside? Otherwise, I'll just pray for him, please, so that we'll save time. There's a lot to do. Daddy, how long have you been married, sir? 32 years. 32 years. If you ever tell me wickedness is not real, if you ever tell me wickedness is not real, our daddy's children would have been married now with their own children. Ejimi, am I correct? Look at this. Abraham waited 25 years. Our daddy has waited 32 years. Sir, you came here by faith. You are our father here. And you did not feel embarrassed to come out and stand here. Look at me, sir. I want you to look at my eyes so that you will know that I'm the one that has told you. In the name of Jesus, I don't care whether your wife has passed menopause or not. I don't care whether she can give birth or not. I decree to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, hold my hand, sir. You will not have a child. You will have children. 
listen sir i'm not saying god told me to tell you i am telling you there is something called a prophet's reward in the name that is above all names i speak over your life that force of darkness that has vowed that you will not have continuity i cancel it right now yeah. sir you are struggling financially i have to pray for you god wants to open a door for you i, I hope you're not embarrassed sir, that i'm talking to you please hold my hands jesus please change our daddy's story let 32 years of barrenness come to an end now in the name of jesus christ i pray amen now please we're going to be very fast you are here for yourself you are not married you are standing for something. in the name of jesus christ supernatural miracle now we're going to be very fast you can see it's past nine but there are so many things we need to do we're going to do two things at the same time all those who are here trusting god for any miracle any miracle aside from barrenness except if you have another thing i don't care what it is please you are going to come there are men of god here who are going to lay hands on you very quickly it's a miracle service now look at this i want you to organize yourself uh those outside oh, hold on please hold on overflow two just walk right to the front you don't have to come here overflow to the whole of those occupying the roadside just walk right to the front of your your stage there overflow one here just walk right to the front here all those who are here you can just come out come out organize yourself you are sick or you are standing in for people jesus listen if you are standing here for impartation go back please 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 don't make a fool of yourself we are going to pray for i know some of you just want me to touch you there's nothing wrong with you don't play games with god go back to your seat you will receive impartation some of you there's nothing wrong you just want in case if there's something i should still pray go back please we don't have that time are we together now i'm not joking please there is no time huh so those outside just obey instructions please some of you think i have to be the one to touch you that's unbelief i i spent time talking about faith here just walk outside stand there overflow look at how many people pastor for god's sake look at this look at how many people huh? almost everybody look at standing for somebody the devil wants to destroy people have you noticed that in the last one month there's been an outbreak of mysterious sicknesses someone who just get up in the morning and you cannot breathe again that devil is a liar in the name of jesus and i also understand there have been mysterious accidents you are minding your business car will jam you bike will jam you we are going to take care of all those things today it's called a miracle service now this is what will happen please and please anybody who lays hands on you just go back to your seat believing in faith we don't have time to take testimonies i know there are so many miracles if we do that we're going to spend time here there are other things we need to do are we together now so i will pray for you you can see there are so many people uh let's do it this way pastor pete is with me here so um pastor pete ah no edgy you know what edgy pastor femi you can go outside you can just handle that that one there pastor alpha pastor alpha kenny and um mike please you handle that one benga you will join here me him and pastor Ejimi, and you and who you and pastor femi yes we are not just i don't think just because you are a pastor don't look at me i'm walking by the spirit i don't have to call you we are not playing games this is not about ministry there is grace are we together pastor alpha please outside kenny mike promise where's promise join a jimmy promise femi and and pastor jimmy outside please just guide them protocol the, so that don't relay anybody please behave yourself don't disturb anybody i'm here with pastor pete benga we're going to pray in the name that is above all names shout amen, amen. father was standing in unity from three different points you have anointed this ministry to be a supernatural ministry and bring healing and miracles to your people lord every man of god represented here as we lay hands on your people it doesn't matter what the situation is 
let there be healing let there be deliverance in the name of jesus christ as we minister to you any spirit that is at work in your life must be casted out in the name of jesus christ please guys we have to be very fast so that we'll save time pastor sir thank you so much worship help us please we'll be very fast now all those sitting and around those online just connect by faith there's nobody touching you physically but the holy ghost is there he's representing us and he will touch you while that is happening concurrently please your miracle um uh your prayer request pass it ushers if you can connect yourself i know that there are not many of you protocol you can help them please pass your prayer request if someone sent a text to you now you can copy it quickly please pass your prayer request while laying hands on you if they give you a prophetic word receive it please guys don't waste time on one person let's just do it first jesus will give you praise I have no other God but you. Now, I have no other God but you. Right now, and you have done what no man has done. Please, as they pray for you, just quietly go back to your seat. Rejoice in. Go back to your seat. Check yourself.
quickly pass your prayer requests. I exempted Pastor Jakes for a reason. The Lord gave me a word and then I'm going to give him and um, are we together now? Praise the Lord. There is an anointing that is going to release upon you now before before we come to prayer. I know there are people, how far have we gone? Those outside, there's still a number of people. Okay, rise up on your feet, please, quickly. Jakes. The Lord gave me an instruction to tell him to speak prophetically and release an anointing and a grace. Honestly, I don't know what anointing it is, but I want you to believe something heavy will come upon your life. Are you hearing me? Those outside, whether you are joining the line, they can still be praying for you while you receive this. It's going to be a very quick one, and then... Um, Ushers, please, let's have the request so that we can finish it because as I'm still going to speak in your life and there will be some activations. Bless you, sir. Just lift up your hands. Thank you, Jesus. There is no one like you, Jesus. There is no one like you. There is no one like you, Jesus. There is no one like you. season for you. Aya. Oh, le preliosi prombeliete salioste. Some of my worship people here, the Lord will place upon you an unction for worship. A strong unction. David Dan, the Lord is going to be placing upon you an anointing. An anointing is to come upon you. Pare su pretinda ilosi predia. Rekito fiesta kila handa ha Bora kete shubelenda pragadose Rekete gabaka kokosho ke palagana Renda pa freia so palenda ha Resa profilesta kalionde Barasoko palagada I feel like the fire of God moving upon the ground It will come upon the feet of many now 
upon the feet of many. The fire of God will come upon your feet. The fire of God will burn your feet. There's a fire a quickening. My God. Palio friesa kiata la ronte. Barus itateli. Bo grakishti valande kalevose. Tonight the Lord will open up portals for many as you sleep tonight. <laughs> Some of you have an experience of seeing a ladder as angels will ascend and descend bringing messages to you. Tonight, 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 tonight by the power of God's Holy Ghost. By the power of God's Holy Ghost. By the power of God's Holy Ghost. Jesus, we enthrone you. We proclaim you are standing here in the midst of us. Yeah, I sent the Lord's presence. <laughs> Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. And as we worship you, we build your throne. And as we worship you, Jesus, and take, take your, your place. We'll hurry up while the other ministers are busy ministering to the people outside. We are going to pray on the request now. Pastor Pete is going to lead us. Pastor Sajex, please help me since you're the only one here. We are praying for your request. I want you to believe God. Stretch your hands over this place. And I want you to begin to pray in the spirit, everybody. Stretch your hands. You are praying in the spirit. We may not be able to minister directly to everyone. But I want you to believe that God will touch you. Don't just stand watching. Make sure you pray. Stretch your hands. Those online, I want you to know that your requests are with us. We are laying hands by faith also. Those online, you are part of this. Stretch your hands right now as we pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Father in your divine wisdom. When you wanted to communicate to us the mysteries of your will. Lord you wrote it down for us to read. In the same vein oh God. Your sons and your daughters gathered across the nations. Those that are here. Those that are across the world. From the internet. 
they have written their own requests understanding the mystery of the scribes that whatever is written has a spiritual significance father in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ we release the angels that respond to the prayers of men the angels in revelations chapter 8 that burn those prayers as incense and they ascend to the throne room of god right now by the power of god let those angels move swiftly in the name of jesus an angel appeared unto Daniel and said, I have come because of your word. Father, let angels respond according to this request. In the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Nothing here written will go back unanswered. We prophesy in the name of Jesus. The Bible says that the prayer of a righteous man availed much. Father, we are on our knees on this mountain, at this altar, bringing this request before the throne room of God. And the Bible says, he that goeth before the throne boldly shall come back, O God, with results and answers. And the grace and the mercies of God shall be released. Right now, we release grace. And Lord, we release mercy in the name of Jesus every prayer written in this ground upon this mountain it is answered in the name of jesus amen and amen hallelujah give jesus praise give jesus praise aside from those they are still praying for peace everybody rise up Please rise up quickly. Rise up to receive a prophecy and the impartation. Two things we'll do at once, just two, three minutes, and then we're done. Please make sure you wait to the end of the service so that you listen to every announcement. I want to pray. We want to, every miracle service is a platform to activate grace. You have seen certain dimensions of God, but there's more. Lift your hands. I want to pray for you, and I'll join it with the prophecy. This is the second to the last miracle service for the year. So don't be careless about it. Open up your spirit. There are people here who have been crying and say, Lord, I know there can be a new dimension of grace. I have seen your hand in my life, but I want to see a greater level. I pray for you right now in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Drink of a new fountain of grace. Help him, please. Drink of a new fountain of grace. I activate the gifts of the spirit at the count of four. One, two, three, four. Step into it. Eyes be open, ears open. Receive impartations. Receive impartations. Receive grace, grace. Impartation in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you. The kind of favor that you have not seen from the start of this year till now. On this mountain tonight, I invoke it upon your spirit. May that favor come upon you. I call the heavens to bear witness that you are a carrier of favor in the name of Jesus Christ. Where it has worked for others and has refused to work for you, I declare the grace that makes things work the power of performance. Receive it right now. Receive it right now in the name of Jesus. Everything dead in your life. I don't care what and I don't care how long. In the name of the one who raised from the dead. I command that thing to come back to life. I prophesy that nothing dies in your hands. I prophesy that nothing dies in your hands. Tonight, like Pastor Jake prayed, revelations of strategies from the realm of the spirit. Receive it is coming on you. Receive it is coming on you. Receive it is coming on you. Supernatural impartation. I pray for you. Everyone here who wants to start a business, start a company, start something, any value adding platform. I prophesy upon you the spirit of influence may it come upon it the spirit of influence may it come upon it 
the spirit of influence may it come upon it every student here hear me i program your spirit to rise to a new dimension in the name of jesus on common understanding on common illumination any final year student here who it looks as if you are not going from the look of things in the name of jesus we change it here right now believe god we change it now we change it now we change it from your faculty we change it from your department by the authority of the kingdom in the name of jesus anyone here carrying any track record of bad luck it works for others until it gets to your turn then there must be stories i separate you and bad luck forever i separate you and tragedy forever hallelujah this spirit that came to zaria that is causing men to be sick hear my voice there is a platform where ambassadors are in this kingdom therefore i stand apostolically and prophetically we fortify the spiritual borders of this city and we banish such operations in the name of jesus may you and your kind be banished from this city in the name of jesus that spirit that brings accident and untimely death looming around our territory no 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 zaria is a place of light it's not the place where any spirit will come and loom and i speak prophetically across this place every spirit of untimely death hear my voice in the name of jesus i command the gates closed over you i command the gates closed over you not by accident not by bomb blast the gate closes over you everything that has left your hand that left your life that should not have left i don't care where it went to i call it back may it gather its kind and come to you i say it again everything that has left your life has left your hands may it gather its kind and return back to you listen anyone here who the devil has taunted spiritually financially in influence you are not rising for whatever reason in the name of jesus i force you to rise in the name of Jesus, I force you to grow. If there is anybody in this place, from January till now, you have not stood here to testify, I prophesy to you, now and the next 30 days, may it be your turn to stand here. Believe me, believe me, now and the next 30 days, may you stand here to testify anyone here called jobless or you are doing a job that is not a job any nonsense thing around that is not bringing you tangible sizable benefit in the name of jesus i don't know where the jobs are we create vacancies and put you there we create vacancies and put you there any man or woman who said over his dead body for you to succeed i declare their prayers answer tonight i declare their prayers answer tonight i pray for you listen there is a mantle of honor upon this house and if you belong to this family it should be evident in your life and in case it's not yet working like a programming in a computer like an antivirus i place that mantle of honor upon you 
may it shield you from shame may it may it shield you from shame hallelujah every spiritual life that has died here no more passion for the things of God no more passion for prayer no more passion for the word of God I plant in you a fresh passion tonight fresh passion tonight we're rounding up every family represented here that has not had a reason to smile this year it's been tears and tears from home every time they call you from home one episode of bad luck may this be the first good news you will hear good news of breakthrough good news of increase good news of speed in the name of Jesus Christ whoever rises up to find you may the God that I serve even in the secret may he fight them we're rounding up I pray for you barrenness or its kind looming around your life looming around your environment whether in your body whether in your finances whether in the works of your hands in your ministry in your business I pray for you the water that flows that makes the barren plant to receive strength and begin to rise and become a great tree i introduce that water into your life therefore i prophesy to you in the name of jesus be fruitful be fruitful multiply multiply replenish subdue and may you command absolute dominion absolute dominion help them please every strange nightmare strangers roaming around your sleep not allowing you to enjoy the sleep that the saints should enjoy disturbing you oppressing you sleeping with you manipulating your dreams confusing you you don't know whether it's god speaking or it's the devil in the name of jesus i banish those strangers from your life forever i banish those strangers from your life forever in the name of jesus christ and i pray finally for you there is a spirit of increase there is a spirit that causes men to prosper there is a mantle that brings wealth from the east the north the south you have the value but you need the access you have the value already you are not a non-entity you already have what to give but the other side of the exchange is what you are looking for from the east to the west to the north to the south whoever must show up in your life in the next 30 days to be a ladder for you to climb to the next level i prophesy and i call them into your destiny i prophesy and i call them into your destiny there's someone here god is giving you a word go and register a company and just keep it you may not know what to do with it but just keep it keep it and give god space to use it and surprise you that's a prophetic word for somebody here just register it and keep it you there is no business to source for don't worry register it and keep it and give god space to surprise you may that happen to you in the name of jesus christ every circle of continual suffering where you think you are about to rise up another episode of trouble i declare where the devil put a comma i change it to a full stop never again never again never again in the name of jesus christ you're here you need jesus you're saying man of god i've watched the things that the holy spirit has done i have seen the transformation keep standing please no sitting no moving around let's stand up please keep standing you're here and you're saying 
Apostle, I want you to pray for me. I love Jesus Christ. But for some reason, my life has gone haywire. I cannot say that I'm truly enjoying relationship and fellowship with him. And there are others who are saying, man of God, this is the first time. I've always mocked at the things of God. I've never really been serious. But now, I'm making up my mind for Jesus. Overflow 1, overflow 2, all following us online. Wherever you are, I know that our time is gone, but let's honor Jesus. We cannot end this meeting without giving this opportunity. Wherever you are, don't wait for anybody to come. Be the first. I want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come and stand here. I want to lead you to Jesus. Jesus is already talking to some people. God bless you as you come. God bless you as you come. God bless you as you come. There are people outside. Run like there's fire on the mountain. Don't stroll around. Run like there's fire on the mountain. One. I'll count one to five and that will be it. two. Lord, I give you my life. Three, please, we're out of time. Run, run to Jesus. I live for you. Every Come to him, he will give you a fresh start. A new beginning. Will you have your way? Hallelujah. If you are still coming, please rush and join them. It should not take a long time. If you are still indecisive, then just remain at your seat. By now, you should know where you stand. When the Titanic sank, there were only two lists. Those who were saved, those who were lost. If you are not sure you are saved, come out and join them. Because it means that you are not, you are not saved. You should be very sure. If you are a man of God, it's like, I think I'm saved. Come and join them and get a very uh, a, a high level of certainty to know that you are in Christ in the name of Jesus I appreciate everyone daddy thank you for coming and all those who have come to make this decision please understand you are not reciting a poem don't be emotional about it this is a simple decision but it's the greatest miracle you are opening up your heart to the life of God the Bible says and this life is in his son it says he that hath the son hath eternal life say this after me with all your heart and sincerely say Lord Jesus I love you with all my heart tonight I come to you and I declare that you receive my life and manage it for me I receive your life into my spirit I declare that from today Jesus is my Lord my savior my friend and my king i declare that satan has no power over my life i'm a child of god i'm born again in the name of jesus christ father i stretch my hands towards these great precious people bless them let this decision be genuine and let this be the beginning of great days in their lives i anoint you with grace I command that you begin to see the faithfulness and the goodness of God in the land of the living. I plant in you like a virus, a hunger for the things of God. And I declare that it will override every other passion in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Thank you for this great decision that you have made. Now hold on please. I want you to do two things for me. Number one, the Bible says, They that be planted in the house of the Lord, it says they shall flourish in the courts of our God. Visiting the house of God is not the key to consistency. You must settle down and receive the word. Our prayer meetings are Tuesdays, except for this week, we're making a little adjustment. I'm going to bring an announcement on that shortly. But you can be part of it for at least one month so that you can build your spiritual life. And then I want you to follow the gentleman waving his hands they'll have your details and then they'll warmly follow you up on our behalf and the lord will bless you in jesus name please this way all of you god bless you god bless you in jesus name koinonia are you appreciating them dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him. 
that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.